Uh, hello, 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 hello. Okay, we've got some action here now. That's good. All right, hey guys. This is uh, Bo on the Bo Show, How to Change the World, part 14, I think. We got, uh, had a lovely day today. We've got a lovely vibe of people in here at the moment. We had a, little, a few more people arrive today. So lovely, lovely, chill day. We mani- I managed to uh, connect up our water tank, pump water into it, and we've got it on top of a six meter tower. So the plan is that just to minimize, because uh, we're off grid here, so to minimize the use of batteries during the night, we want to eliminate the use of the water pump, which is like using around 400 watts every time the pump goes on. And that adds up to quite a lot of battery requirements at night especially people having showers and so we've had to shut the showers down at night and because uh, we just didn't have the batteries and the the thing is with batteries is that the technology is is not like we're w- basically waiting for lithium batteries to come out uh, so we're just holding off buying any until we can get a, a good price for lithium so by minimizing your power consumption you're minimizing the amount of batteries you need. So we've uh, got a water tower <laughs> that's been in place for over a year and a half. And then we bought a water tank, 4,000 litre tank. And the plan is we'll solar pump water from the dam, our neighbor's dam, into this tank. And that's at the top of the highest point on the property. And then it's six meters up. So we'll pump that water up there. It'll fill up. We've got a stop valve. Once it's full, the pump will stop, and then we will utilize that water through the day, and well, through the night, and the head of the pressure. The pressure of the head it will be enough, fingers crossed, to pump water anywhere onto the property. So yeah, we're solar powered during the day, pump, fill the tank, and then we don't need any power to, to uh, move water around the property. So yeah, that's the plan. We, we, uh, I'll connect up the uh, other hoses tomorrow, and hopefully we'll be pumping water out of the dam in the next few days. So that will be f- be cool. It's uh, it's uh, just one small step in the dream. You know, you have like little projects that you do, and this project has been uh, like probably three three years in the making. Because we had to find the water tower, then we had to get it, and then we had to concre- like work out how to lift it, the six meter tower. <laughs> and then we had to concrete it in place. You know, all these little steps. Yeah, so that's been a great little project. I'm really keen to make that happen. So yeah, minimize batteries um, during the night. So really we only need like uh, lights at night because what we do with the fridges is we've got them on timers so they only operate until about four in the afternoon come back on at at like nine and you get them cold enough that they last and even put like containers of water in there so that they hold that coolness throughout the night so yeah water is a storage mechanism for power for for energy so by cooling the water in the containers, it then will dissipate slowly after that. So yeah, it's all about minimizing the uh, the battery power, battery needs of the of the property at the moment. Obviously, when we've got flush with cash and we can buy the the, the perfect system, off grid system, uh, we'll be able to do that when we when we when we receive the funds that we're seeking. And and then the plan is like to go larger scale with the off-grid system. We've got a couple of wind turbines, a couple of uh, enough heaps of solar, you know, 10 plus or maybe 20 kilowatt of power. And then we can start to provide power to electrical vehicles. We could sell, well not even sell, we could even just give it away to people they come to the mine fleur for the day or stay for a night and they plug in recharge their cars and then head back to Perth 
that's been a long time during to get to that point but we will get there so yeah we and then eventually you know we could offer power to the neighbors providing that meets stays within the legal requirements right i don't know what the story is but yeah there's there's many opportunities when you start having excess power what other things can you do maybe you can set up a ice making business <laughs> Because you've got so much power during the day. Like uh, we've got a lot of sun here in in summer, and we've got a lot of wind as well. So we have the abilities to use. Like maybe you could do Bitcoin mining. Now that we've got Starlink, you can uh, you could get a couple of Starlinks and start beaming beaming Bitcoin mining. Yeah, you could be Bitcoin mining. You could be doing all sorts of things. Anything that. You got. We we learnt this last summer. We've got three kilowatts of panels, and during the day, I was like, "What can we use? We've got so much power, and the batteries are charged up by about ten thirty. So you have p all this excess power. It's like, where? How can we store it? How can we utilize it? Uh, and yeah, making ice is one option. Pumping water into a tank is another option. I've heard this that. Uh, another option, people have experimented with building towers, and then you, during the day, you move a huge, you know, a couple of ton weight up. It's on a, on a you know, wire rope, and you raise it, raise it slowly throughout the day with a little motor. And then at night, you simply put the motor in reverse, and it acts as a generator, and you slowly lower the weight on a gears system and you could probably find a couple of big trees to do this so I'm really keen to experiment with that how do we store energy you know, there's there's lots of technologies that they're looking into like salt storage so you could build a, a solar thermal unit which is like parabolic mirrors all pointing to one like a it's like on an obelisk, you have a, s a dome with salt in it, as I understand. And that and the par those parabolic mirrors, you have a couple of hundred or thousand mirrors all on a um, controlled to pin to point this their light, magnify their light to this central dome, and it heats the c salt to thousands of degrees. And then you utilize that salt, uh, and you have a heat exchanger that heats water and then you, it's the convention way of like a steam turbine that's one method that I'm aware of but yeah energy storage how do we do it I've always been I've always wanted to have a property where you can pump water up a hill into a big dam maybe the it's like 50 or 100 meters high you pump it up during the day because use all your power that you've got and then Whenever you need power, you just turn on a turbine. That would be, if you finding the right property to do that, that does have to be uh, the right property. So yeah. Energy storage. What other methods? Hydrogen is a big one. You can use hydrogen. So you can basically just put uh, cathodes in water, I believe. And you then put electricity through that water, through the cathodes, and, and the byproduct is hydrogen. You capture that hydrogen and you can use it for fuel, to run turbines, run engines. You could probably burn it for heating. Not sure. But I do know hydrogen is a problem because it's it's number one on the periodic table which means it's the lightest element and being the lightest element it's harder to contain and like you can't have the seals have to be the best and even uh, yeah even I think it's also quite corrosive so th that's what we need to look at is how how complicated hydrogen is to store I know that the the Japanese are really pushing hydrogen as a, the next fuel source. 
where Elon and the electrical side car companies are pushing electric. He just says Elon says that the amount of like I think with hydrogen there's two reactions taking place. Is that right? Yeah, you've got to produce the hydrogen and then you've got to burn it. And you've also got to store it in between. Where with electricity, the storage mechanisms are pretty good now. And y you don't have to burn anything. You don't have to store... Well, how does that work? You don't have to store a very uh, combustible fluid. Like there's... Hydrogen presents a lot more uh, risks. So there's a lot more safety procedures. A lot, it's not quite as simple. Uh, obviously, electricity also has safety procedures. But yeah, I think it is. It's just more efficient in the conversion process of creating. Maybe you need less. Like if you think about it, you're producing electricity from PV and it's going straight into your storage mechanism. Where with hydrogen, you're producing electricity and then you're moving that electricity into an electrical process which is, has its efficiencies. So you're losing out there and you're getting hydrogen and then you're burning the hydrogen. So you're also losing, uh, you know, it's not a perfect combustion. So you're losing more energy there. Maybe 70% is converted into hydrogen and then another when the explosion happens you get another f 80 percent of that energy converted into uh, mechanical uh, energy and so there's just a, no a couple of extra processes involved which is what Elon said is the well, that's why I chose electricity electrical motors to me it makes perfect sense <laughs> I'm a bit of an Elon fanboy, if you didn't already notice. Yeah, so there's, like, talking sustainability. There's so many ways, there's so many technologies now that we can utilize in a, in a sustainable village to capture and to store our energies so that we can use them to the benefit of the community. And one of the big things they say in in any like city or any in any industrial civilization is you need to have cheap energy. Like you can't be putting all your money into the the electrical grid you, if because that's just an additional cost. If if the providers, the government can provide cheap electricity, that generates more abundance in the world or in that little area. So we can, there's all these methods now that we can utilize to obtain maximum efficiency with energy storage and energy production to the point where now the price, like the ideal system to me would be that you provide free electricity to anybody. And it's all generated from the sun and the wind and the geothermal uh, that yeah, and, and we just work out how to store it so we need it when it's available on demand. But really never before has there been a time where all that technology is available. I had a friend, Luci Luciano, who I worked with when I was in the oil and gas industry. He was a bit of a boffin, Italian boffin. And he was looking at heat exchanges and like low heat type energy production. Pretty sure that it was like where you use wood or you use other different materials to burn to gen and capture the heat and then convert it to electricity. And supposedly there's a lot of like really cool systems that are coming out that require less and less, I think, f like uh, work just as well with many different types of fuel sources like hemp or timber products or grass or yeah so that with our sustainable villages 
we incorporate this technology. We could incorporate this technology to make the the village uh, harmonize as much as possible, and free electricity should be one of those requirements. Yeah. So in our design brief, free electricity, and actually, let's do free free everything, free free resources. So you free internet, free. Uh, free gas for cooking, free, free water. Ideally, you, you set it up so you can you've got enough water on the property to to provide everyone for a free free amount. Yeah, and I think that would generate uh, a, a type of industry creative industry because that is not cost prohibitive you want to support your small businesses that are being started you want to offer them as the biggest head start so if they don't have to pay for electricity or water or even rent like you just offer a space and you provide everything they need uh, and then they get get to work and that allows them to be as creative they don't have to worry about all those things they just can get in on to the job of creating <laughs> all right i'm just going to put something on for a little bit something interesting uh, and then i'm going to do some more talking soon what do you want to know what do you want to learn about oh i have to do it on my phone I'm going to play this. This is a really interesting clip. There's a uh, a Australian comedian called Rodney Rude. And he's obviously rude because he was... Uh, that's in his name. He didn't let anyone... He didn't lie to anyone. He knew, he knew he was rude. And that, to me, was a very powerful thing. Because it, then it people can't come back at him it's like hey i'm rude you knew that so don't complain about what i have to say don't 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 <laughs> bitch about the uh the topics that i've been speaking like you it is rude and so it sort of set the bar so people obviously the ones who didn't want to hear rude wouldn't go <laughs> but he is an amazing man and he's very very funny and he he was also part of the uh like he he fought for free freedom of speech because in the 80s and this article will talk about this the the west australian police started to come down hard on him because he was telling jokes about police he was swearing and he was so they they tried to arrest him and it really he went to court and it really backfired on him on the police and since then, comedians in Australia have been able to speak a lot more truth. So have a listen to this. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Australia's most popular stand-up comedians. Okay, here's a comedy subject. Any coppers in tonight? Yeah! Oh, that's good, because I want to buy some cheap cannabis. <laughs> it was beyond risque, but they loved him. He was building, he built, I saw him build an audience of, you know, followers. They were fans. I remember watching Rodney Road and just thinking it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And I was just joking, just joking. I did a bar room in WA. The bouncer had said to me, he said, oh, Rodney, he said, there's um, a couple of detectives in tonight and they're going to arrest you. And, and it was all over policeman joke. You know, the more I told policeman jokes, the angrier they got. 
I said, ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, there was a couple of Perth detectives in a long-term gay relationship. They decided to go and buy a big black strap-on. So they're at home on Sunday, and one of them said, ah, oh, where's the new strap-on? And his mate said, ah, oh, he said, it's in the freezer. He said, oh, what's it in the freezer for? He said, oh, I thought while we're watching the footy on TV, you might feel like a cold one. And, of course, the, the coppers got... Uh, when I said that, they, the one guy was a short ass, and he went all red. He was angry. Rodney Rood was arrested for obscenity in a public place. As one of the leading comedians on the club circuit, he felt he had to fight for his freedom of speech for the sake of Australian comedy. I don't want to sound like I'm a big note in myself, but I, I just at the time thought that I, I need to be the one to stand up, and, and I just got angry. Rude's routines were read out, read out word for word in court, which only strengthened his case. Those judges there, you know when people try not to laugh when you're a kid in school? He had his face like that, and he's going like this. Hold his face so he wouldn't laugh. In a game-changing verdict, Rodney Roode won his case, blazing a trail for comedians to follow. A lot of people have been charged in WA, you know, Dave Warner and Angry Anderson and Molly Meldrum. When, it, when I won, that, that made it easier for everybody to go there. and Because I, I think a lot of the, the journalists and that were saying, you know, were, were on my side. Rodney Roode is one of the biggest selling comedians in Australian history. His success, alongside other blue comics like Kevin Bloody Wilson and Cole Elliott, is a product of the huge people-pulling power of the clubs. Yeah, amazing. This guy is the funniest. <laughs> I was very drawn to him as a kid. Here we go. Yeah, very funny man. And uh, very unique Australian comedy. Uh, yeah, and I I got to see him once in at Burswood, and it was really my friend had won some tickets on the radio, and so he invited me along, and it was awesome. It was a we had a table of like twelve people, and I think everyone on that table had won tickets, and the whole show I was just in hysterics, like l I couldn't stop laughing, uh, but I still remember the couple in front of me at the table. They did not laugh the whole show. They were like in total shock. Like total shock because of what he was saying, how he was saying it. Just in disbelief, I believe. But they didn't get up and leave, though. They, they, they did stay through the whole show, but they didn't laugh at all. Very interesting. So, yeah, I highly recommend get having a listen to Roddy Root. It's obviously, there's, a, there's an era to it and a t the type of comedy was of that era. Hey man, how you going? Good bro. Good to see you. Oh, one of these ones actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Dragons. Yeah. Fuck him. Definitely. Hey man. Oh really? Doing a potty? Yeah. 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 Doing one every every night. Yeah. 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 Just having people jump in. Yeah. Yeah. People sit down, have a chat. Excellent. Yeah. So. Otherwise, they just talk. Talk nonsense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love a glass. Just a swig, even. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cheers, man. How, how's your life? Transformed? For, uh, what an experience. It's like a totally different world. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on, because I think you can talk through this piece of yeah. Ah, <laughs> you move though. <laughs> Good move. Um, let me just... You got it all happening here? Yeah, trying to get a system in place. Hello, you t if you talk, that should be on. It should be on. Oh, yeah. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, testing, yeah, testing. Testing. Oh, mate. Okay, hang on. Testing, 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 testing. Okay, ah, that's, yeah, that's better. That's working now. 
cool. I got two mics, so two of those type of mics. But you don't even have to have the headphones on if you don't want. Now, it's more just to make sure you can. We're picking up sound. Picking up. Yeah, picking you, up. Actually, you can just talk in the mic if you want. This one. Wait, 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 wait. No. Test, 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 test. Hello. Oh, maybe Hello. that's off. Oh, maybe. Is that better? There you go. Hey, we're hey back on. welcome, Monty. Um, you can't really see you though. We got I want to get a couple extra cameras and yeah. then one going this way. Facing around. Yeah. So we'll just you just have to look at my my head for a while. You can make it off this one. There's four bars above uh, each for each other. That would be cool. Down on one another because the light wouldn't be affected. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get the lighting right as well. Yeah. Yeah. Shorts was saying that he's got a a, a light for podcasting. Okay. Yeah, so... And what's the difference? <laughs> I don't know. He just said it's like a, a nice light, that's even light. Yeah. Like, these ones are pretty full on. Like I guess you just want a good light covering. Yeah. Mm. It spans across the basis of your, your whole desk. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. But you could set it up, even just from the roof lights, would probably be the best. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Creating no shadows. No shadows, yeah, that's it. You want to have, like, be able to see people clearly. Yep. Like, that's that's pretty good light oh, for me. Yeah, definitely. On me, but you're a bit in the dark. I'm in the dark. Yeah. Come to the dark side. I had a few podcasts with, uh, did you meet Shane? You might not have met Shane. He came here while you were gone. This uh, interest, really interesting dude from Victoria. Ah. Did you? That's a few good Victorians. <laughs> Another Victorian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was, I've realised now why they locked down Victoria so hard. Yeah, it's to keep it's them in. These, they're all freedom fighters yeah, freedom in Victoria. Fighters. <laughs> they're like a different breed. <laughs> it's not one whole community, Victoria. The whole Victoria, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a particular yeah. type of breed in Victoria for some reason. That, that, the, the rebels. Yeah. Yeah. Seem to be attracted to yeah. <laughs> to there, yeah, to Victoria. Who knows why, but yeah. But every, all the Victorians that come over here are cool as fuck. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't think I've, you know, I went back home uh, for a little bit and I was walking through the street and I kept like looking at the cars, being like, oh, looking at their number plates, like, oh, that one's from Victoria. Uh-huh. And then I'd realise... Yeah, I was, right. I was so on. used Hang to on. seeing cars over here. Have like, there we go. Wow, oh. that's better. Is it? Sure. Sorry, I'm just playing with the mics. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Yeah, that is better. Yeah. I just can't hear myself. Is oh, you can't? can't? You can't hear anything? That's probably good. Oh, hang on, your mic, Hello, your on. headphones. That could be it there. Check, check. Can you hear? Check, check, check. I can hear. Okay. All right. Sweet. We're on. Uh, uh, <laughs> you've been doing uh, audio uh, sound at the yeah. circus festival. Yeah. How was that gig? We started off just setting up tents, really. Like, yeah. we volunteered from the 26th, left here, had Chrissy here mm. at Mindful, which was fucking amazing. Mm. Like, it was, was, wasn't so, it? So it really good. just fell into place. Yeah. Mm. Massive dinner from all different sorts of li walks of life, you yeah. know. So amazing. To mm. Each meal was each little contribution to the big meal mm. was like so much love mm. yeah. yeah it really was and it just sort of happened mm. at the right time late afternoon yeah, yeah. get all the orphans in that's <laughs> it yeah it was really chill it was probably one of the better Christmases I've had I think yeah I'd say yeah nice and flowy and it's no. my first Christmas away from home. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, like, being here, like, thank you as well. Oh. So, like, like having oh, this space just to be able to bring people in to, for that time of year, you know, mm. when they're not, they may be missing their families and things like this too, and mm. just having that sense of mm. comfort mm. is, like, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah, it really like, was. It's so nice. Mm. Yeah, it was fun how it just worked out, and you had all these, like, we had all the camper mate. Uh, travelers come and stay and yeah. so they all just fit in they mm. all just became part of the family amazing yeah yeah it was it was amazing 
Yeah. And then, yeah, basically on the the next day after that, I left, went and went to the circus up the road five minutes, <laughs> pulled up, and I was five the first minutes. one there. <laughs> yeah, at the circus. Five oh, you minutes. were the first there. Nice. Yeah, one of the first, like literally before everyone on the twenty sixth of December. There was like no one. It was dead. Nice. Like there was. It was just the people that have just been there for 16, 17 years, you know, like the yeah. real yeah. basis of the crew. Yeah. Like Wee John, you got Gons, you got Fatso, yeah. you got Lou, all these people that are just like the core of the group that are just there yeah. and then you're So you got arrived. to you got to spend time with them yeah. before it got a yeah. bit out of hand. Yeah, every morning we were doing handstands and oh. yoga in like the little bar area yeah. where you do the cab- cabaret nice. Yeah, 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 those. Yeah, yeah. We're doing handstand lessons and yoga in the morning and Fatso's yeah. just teaching us. Fatso, like, the owner of the whole thing is, yeah. like, fully just Getting teaching it. us how to handstand. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. And because that, that allowed you to then get solid with those guys before, you know, it got a bit mad. I'm sure exactly. they got started getting stressed out and... Yeah, yeah. Everyone running around fucking trying to f- put out fires, you That's know. Right. <laughs> yeah, we called them spot fires. <laughs> spot too. fires. And Brad, the uh, electrician there, like shout out to Brad because he just is a workhorse. Like, yeah, right. All these problems go wrong. It's like, Brad, where's Brad? Where's Brad? Mm. He'll fix him. Nice. So he's a bit of a saviour of like the, yeah, making the everything. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Run smoothly. Ooh. But yeah, we started out... I, I heard they dude. had some issues with the power, did they? Oh, yeah. Like, blew a fuse, like, oh, out right. on the street. So, yeah. there was... They had to get the actual power company to come out. Like, this is the Friday morning. Right. Oh, was, the night before... Well, the day of the, the event. The day of. Oh, it might have been Thursday. Mm. Thursday morning or something like this. But I know, yeah, it was like, hold, like this is close. Mm. And because the whole time we were setting up lights, we ended up setting from tents. And then because we, we were there for so long, we mm. got into the position where they're like, oh, well, do you want to do sound and lights for the cabaret nights? Mm. And then eventuated into us being the, on the lights for the actual festival itself. Unreal. And um, yeah, so we were setting up lights. We were learning how to use these controls for like hours on end out of our own time. Whoa. Uh, leading up to it like a week before. And and then the power just went boom and we lost everything. <laughs> and then, yeah, the power had surged. And because they were talking about it, we were setting up the lights. They were like, we don't, we can't actually trust this power mm. purely because coming from one source they were talking about the power and how much they're absorbing yep. out of it they're taking out of it yep. and then eventually they were just like bang yep. overloaded yep. too much current too much draw yeah yeah you could imagine the amount of stuff they've got that it's needing lights and and they have they probably have like those big halogen lights as well like big draw lights not leds yeah. You know, you get three or four lights that are big halogens. They're like, oh, like a thousand waters. Yeah, that's exactly right. And mm. like in the big top, there was um, just lead lights in there. Mm. But the performers, I can't remember their name, Brass Monkeys maybe. Mm. They'd been there for 16 years and they were like, no, we want these other lights in here. Like give us some more. Like right. tell Fatso. Yeah. We're having we these want li- lights. We're having these lights. Yeah. And so we ended up putting these lights in. Those four lights were the same amount of wattage as, like, draw, yep. as the whole, like, 16 to 18 yep. LED lights in yeah. there. Yeah, yes, that's it. And that's how the lights used to be. It's just yeah. huge drawers. Yeah, man. Yeah, and now, yeah, that's the, that's the awesome thing of technology of lighting. Yeah. Like, just, you know, we're probably burnt, like, the power we're using right now on the lighting is maybe, like, 100 watts. Yeah. Where in the past it was like 80 watt light globes. <laughs> uh, so like yeah. I was talking earlier about our the power system here and the batteries we need, mm. but because of LED, you need so much less batteries f- at night time. Yeah. But if you're on halogen, yeah, you've got to have a huge system, huge battery system. How is that part going? Is there? Oh, I sent a message on? today. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was like, what? I've been very patient. It's only been four months. What? The fuckers, yeah. Four it's months. Being, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember the date that it started, but actually, I might grab some of that wine. Yeah, I'll get you a little. Oh, oh, oh cheers. I'll get you a fresh one. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Be good to get the camera so we can see Monty as well. 
Maybe we get Monty to sit a little bit to the left. So if there's any camera people out there and lighting specialists, although we, it sounds like Monty's the uh, lighting specialist now. You're the, it sounds like you're the lighting specialist now. <laughs> we can, maybe we can do some lighting for the podcast. <coughs> I might just grab a drink of water. <coughs> yeah, like, maybe they've even got some old lights. That they oh, bring it over. Yeah. yeah. Just grab water. Too good. Um, yeah. I got you a Viking mug. Hey? I got you a Viking oh, mug for the, for the wine. A little bit to the, the right, Monty, for now. Oh, yeah? So we can just at least get your, the shape of your head in there. Yeah, cool. Have you have you wanted to get into free diving? Free diving? Have you ever been interested in free diving? I was think it? there was a dude here doing it. Yeah. He just gone out today. Yeah, what Paul. 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 Nah. Yeah, I saw him. It was down the beach when I was there. And uh, he... um. He's like he come out of the water looking like a real professional. Yeah. He had his weight belt and he had all his gear and he had his big wat dive watch. We could free this up, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a little bit short. I'll put that there. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that's what I need to do is set all these wires up and get it all. These are sick. I love a good yeah. Viking mug. Yeah. <laughs> give, yeah. Him a, give him a show of it. Yeah. It's Cheers. A mighty, it's a mighty Viking Cheers. mug. Cool. All right, and I'll sit. So let's try and get both of us in the picture. Mm. There you go. Sweet. My, my yeah, <laughs> this is in the way, but straight across your head. <laughs> straight on my <laughs> smile. It just looks like I've got a microphone for uh. my mouth. They can, you've, I've seen uh, some podcasts and they've got the mics sitting on stands, just on the desk, uh, and you can yeah. move them around. But that's cool for you, like being able to sit up straight and have the mic right in front of you. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Cheers to red wine. Cheers. You know Odin. A couple of Vikings. Uh, the Odin, the Norse god. That's supposedly all he drank was red wine. That's all he ate. <laughs> <laughs> Just drank red wine all day long. <laughs> you know, there's so this there girl. There must be something uh, good in it. Nina. And, Nina. Um, I mean, she doesn't drink or eat red Nina. wine all Beautiful day. Nina. But, uh, yeah, she's over at, at the circus at the moment doing all the Little cooking. Little petite Nina. Yeah. Yeah, small. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I know Nina oh, very wow. well. She's been here quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, she's going to come back over, I think. Sweet. Like, tomorrow even. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's a very sweet lady. Yeah. She's yeah. like seven days into fasting, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Night, Riley. See you tomorrow. See you, man. Night, Night Riley. See you tomorrow. Seven yeah. days into fasting. Seven days. Wow, what's she, what is she taking in? Anything? Exactly. Nothing. I know. Just like total not eating. Just like water. Water. Wow. That's it. Seven days. Seven days, man. and she's in the sh- and she's in the kitchen cooking up like cooking whoa. food for everybody. Strong will. Like whoa, like yeah. just. Yep. Yep. I'd wow. be too tempted. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you really would be. Yeah. I had a I did a five day fast, and it was like green juices. And that was really good. That was mm. in Bali, which is another nice place to do a fast because the weather's beautiful and just you know it's pretty relaxing. Yeah. So, because it, you, I mean, if you're working, then that's a lot more stress because mm. you need that energy. But if you're just like relaxing by a pool, it's a bit easier. Green juices. <laughs> <laughs> Made for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's life. But the cool thing was we, it was like a training course as well about health, how to like diet and health and all these things so we were doing training during the days oh, okay and they were teaching us about fasting and different juice methods and things like that so it worked really well because you everyone was fasting at the same time and have you ever heard of colonics 
Nah, not what it says. So it's they they basically jam a what well, don't jam they slide a tube up your butt, and they pump water into your uh, large intestine, and and it basically they pump it until there's pressure. They expand the intestine, and because we have like the bowel itself, <clears throat> they say that there's a lot of you imagine a pipe. And it starts to build up with uh, debris. <laughs> yeah, like a normal pipe. And so the yeah. hole gets smaller. Yeah. And it's just shit. It's packed in shit that's been there for, for years. Large intestine. Yeah. 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 And so they, when you're doing a fast, it helps, like the green juice, help break all that uh, material down. Yeah. Weakens it. And, and then you're also taking xylem husk. Like this, it's like a, a seed that when you eat it, you mix it in water and you drink it. And that xylem husk it sort of scrapes the walls of the intestine, is the theory, to help clear and clean that 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 debris, I guess yeah. you'd call it. Shit. Like an exfoliation. Basic. Old shit, yeah, <laughs> internal exfoliation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get these colonics, and so they pump this water in, and you're just... You're just sitting there and you can feel the pressure building and then you tell them when to stop and then they let the water flow back out. Whoa. And there's a clear pipe so you can see all the stuff flying out or floating, floating down the stream. It's really, and you'd be surprised how much stuff comes out. Like it's all this chunky, yeah. I think uh, my brother talked about the same thing except when he was uh, constipated. (laughs) Well, let the water pump up the bum. That's it, yeah. And supposedly John Wayne, when he died, he had oh like, God. I don't know the number, but it was like kilos of shit that was in his, because he ate no, his, his diet, you know, it was like, uh, he lived it. Like a, a lot of ate a meat, a lot of meat, a lot of smoking, a lot of drinking. Mm. And he, and that's that's a theory that, People's intestines, like they look fat, because yeah. it's just full of, full of shit wow. that never gets expelled. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was really good. Like it, it really uncle. cleared me out. Like of my, my years of not eating well. Mm. That fast, I think, was a very good cleanse. Yeah, and it got that intestine free and clear again. Yeah, that's um, funny you say that because my uncle John. <coughs> He's like super skinny everywhere, mm. apart from his stomach. Mm. Like his stomach just bulges like a big, massive egg. Yeah, like it's probably huge. full of shit. It's full of just gunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, wow. and it's our diet, so we have to like clear that out before we it like help us to reset. So I'll get him to do a five day fast Fuck. and blow that. Yeah, get some colonics going. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Should mention it to him. Yeah. Mm. So there's benefits of fasting, I think, when you've really like not looked after your body. It's a really good way to reset. Mm. Anyway, circus festival. Circus festival. What a like! It's amazing. Like I'm still blown away by the fact that it's only like it's our neighbours. Yeah. Bringing like these world amazing people to this area. Yeah. Yeah. It's and creating this world class event. The beautiful thing as well, like, the area that you're situated in here at mm. my, with Mindful Earth, mm. the sanctuary, is like, that's the circus there every single year. Mm. Like, amazing acts, like, everything's happening here. Yeah. And then, also, just so happened to be that I was at the circus, like, oh, what am I doing for New Year's? Yeah, there's, like, a door at Cozy <laughs> Corner, our local beach, <laughs> like 200, 250, 300 people down uh, on Did the you beach. go? Yeah. And it was good? Oh, it was. What? The whole of Cozy Corner Road was just cars. Whoa. Like, all the way back, and the whole beach was just like, they had massive speakers down there. Like, Whoa. And a huge DJ set up. Whoa. Yeah, the works, and then obviously the sunrise, everything was just like. Whoa. Whew. Man. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So everything's hey, like night. happening around this place. Man. Sleep well. Nighty, 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 night. But yeah, man, this place and no planes over the head. Oh, I think that's the best factor. Right. No planes. That's right it. Right here. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I, 
I don't think you realise how much more peaceful it is when there's not the, the jets flying over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it, it pulls you out of your your state when you sit, like when you sit, hear a car go past or a, a plane or... Yeah, the but present. It, like it, it pulls you out of the now. present, yeah. Yeah, so you can... It, it reminds you of the world going on. You know, the outside world. Seeing yeah. a plane fly over, it it's reminds like, oh, you of that. Yeah. Where you don't even think about. I don't even think about the, like the other world that's going on when yeah. I'm here. Just yeah. in your own little, it's a, in our own little reality. But to a point, you got to remember, you know. Yeah. Like oh yeah. That, yeah. That, yes. It's like oh, it's so S- nice here. Still but going on. Yeah. 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 You have to be a r- realist. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I exactly. just drop back into that world every now and then. <laughs> and stuff see beyond. what's going on. I have to take the trash out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I'm. I mean, that's yeah. There's there's beauty in that. No technology, no TVs here. I think not having a TV here Mm. is is a really powerful thing. Yeah. Because if we had a TV on in the corner there, like everyone would be watching it right now. We did like mosquitoes. Like mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My son Hayden. He used to um. Whenever I'd take him out somewhere, I'd have to like arrange, like, because they have TVs in restaurants and shit these days. Mm. Like, you know, TGI Fridays? I remember taking him there. TGI Fridays? Yeah. yeah but that's Mango. Yeah, Mango. Yeah. She's been coming up. T- Thank God it's Friday. Ah. TGI. Yes, yes, yes. They always had TVs in there. But cool food. Like fun sort of American t- Tex-Mex type food. Hey, mate. Hello. Come on. Coming up for a visit. Yeah. Hey, mister. The you having dogs, a good time up here? Dogs must be asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah, they had TVs. So he would just be drawn. Like, he couldn't get his eyes off it. And they'd have sport playing. He loved sports. So it was like... So I'd have to arrange him to sit where he couldn't see a TV. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But is wow, it? Th- it's like a, it is a form of like, um, hypnotization. We're hypnotized to be drawn to that movement. Mm. We just look at TVs without even realizing we're what we're watching them. Oh, we just look, we're just like insects, you know. We just look to light. And we're yeah, just, we're super and movement. Drawn. And then if movement's happening yep. within those lights, yep. it's a whole new spectrum. Yeah, it's like whoa. And then there's like storylines to the lights that are being had. And then you're like, whoa, mm. whoa. And then mm. like so yeah. drawn and then sucked in. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's four hours has gone by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mister. And you're at the beach in your van. It's broken down. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have it there as a bed. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the, they're the two options you have in life. So <laughs> what, be watching TV each night or be out in your van with a broken down van. Yeah. Out, in the, out by the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 amazing. So yeah, that cozy corner doof, and then the circus. Man, and then it's it's all happening in this area. Yeah, you know, amazingness. Yeah, and the witchy gypsies coming from witchy gypsies. Witchy, yeah, Witchcliff. Yeah, man, Witchcliff's is such good. Like that little cafe they have there, and all the little courtyard. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's like what yard ten, bird. Ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah. 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 So good, man. It's a good little spot. Augusta, isn't it? ten or fifteen minutes the other way. Yeah, yeah. So good, man. Yeah, yeah. And to me, our, it's the local beach. It's Hamlin Bay. It's the magic mm. one. Uh, it's a very special place. And we're gonna get over to the island, we're, Hamlin Island. Yeah. We've re, re, renamed <laughs> Hamlin it. Hamlin Island. Dragon Island. Dragon Island. Yeah. Right, I've got a song. I just wrote a song about the circus, and it involves dragons. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. Sweet. A whole wrap-up of the circus weekend and, like, three weeks that I spent there. A whole wrap-up of it all. And, like, everybody here is involved, like, Brucey and all these others, Sam, Ingrid, you know, all these jewels, like, all of them. Dima, this other Israeli dude that you'll probably meet. Dima, I met him. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. You said come across. Yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. Such a cool dude. Yeah, that's the dude I was. He kicking was your mate, right? Whole, like, yeah. I, he was the first person I met at the circus festival. Wow. And I walked up to him and I said, "Hey, man, I'm just volunteering. I don't really know where to be." <laughs> and then he was like, "I'm just volunteering as well. Like, 
But talk, I'm with this guy, Brad. Talk to him. He knows everything. And if Brad ended up being that mechanic that fixed the whole like ah, place and kept everything together. Sweet. Yeah, man. So I was just in it like that. Yeah. With Demo, we're building tents, and then they slowly was like, "Do you want to do sound and lights together?" And then they were just pushing us further and further into it. And then on the Saturday night, we ran cake, tripping balls on our own, <laughs> <laughs> like tripping absolute balls. We took acid. Half a tab of acid, half an hour before cake. Like, we've got this boat. And then just fully ran cake. We're, like, toggling down all the lights together, like, down the staircase and making sure she had light on her the whole time. And, yeah, man. Amazing. Crazy. It was crazy experience, and I still yeah. haven't so really... cake yeah. was the nighttime cabaret Night, show. In the bus station. Yeah. Yeah, I we were doing lights for that trip. And Whoa. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Have you Sweet guys seen man. my poncho around? No, nah, man. Haven't seen your poncho, but I remember that's maroon. Maybe it's under your cubby in your cubby house. No, it's not. It's not under there. No. Oh. Have you built your cubby? No. No. Just felt, I just built a ten-minute one under the table there. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So now you. You just like had a crash course in being a lighting engineer. Yeah, and we have the number of John, which we were working under, and he's like, he was set like we had a shot in the like the Royale, the big yellow and blue tent. Mm. With Dima and I spent like three or four hours just in there mucking around, like fucking with these lights, like making the coolest patterns that we could, Whoa. you know, like just yep. had the opportunity to work with this equipment's like, mm. like I think twenties, thirties thousand dollars you know like yeah, just wow. huge massive equipment that's just like you would never really get the opportunity to mm. work with as an inexperienced lighting and sound wow. engineer yeah. <laughs> get into that role sort of slip thing so we had this amazing opportunity and we took it like in our stride waking up early we're doing like 12 hour days instead of five wow you no know, volunteering we're just doing 12 hour days, spending like three or four hours each day, just like fully wanting to learn these lights and be able to do cake, which we succeeded in. Wow. Yeah. And on yeah. the Saturday night? On the Saturday night, we were on our own, wow. completely on our own, like yeah. no no backup. Yeah. Just like, and lights were going opposite directions. So we'd have to like recorrect them. And, and so Dima would be there and then he'd like stop. He'd be like, I don't know what to do. And so then I'd jump in and then fix it. And then it'd be like us jumping between each other, just like feeling each other's energies and just like jumping in with when we needed to and things like this between one another. Amazing. Yeah. Ah. We just met. And that that's the cool thing. Like you took that opportunity. You know, there was an opportunity that was available and, and you jumped at it. And that yeah. you think about how that's going to help your career as a musician, knowing all that, like just to be able to get things right understanding the lighting yeah it's pretty important i guess definitely as part as as being an artist yeah 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 that's what joel said he said as lighting and sound like you are part of the performance mm. take yourself and say to yourself that you are part of this performance because mm. it matters so much yeah really yeah yeah Hence, our podcast lighting needs to yes, be improved because yes. it, it'll make a huge difference if we can actually see you. Hang on. There I am. <laughs> there you go. In the lighting. <laughs> in the light. Nah. Mm. But, but um, yeah, as it, someone said yesterday, it's like everything is small steps. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, cool. They had me the opportunity to play as well. Like yeah. New Year's, they got me up for a set and then. Wow. The acoustic night, I'd done a set oh. out on the veranda. With, like, everybody was singing, Sidifani, oh, uh. And this is supposed to be released, like, two days ago, but I've been at the circus for, like, three weeks, flat out. Like, yeah. I didn't expect to go into this role of, like, 12-hour no. days. No. And so, as soon as this happened, I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this song out in time. Mm. Because mm. I was just flat out, flat out, flat out. Mm. And so now, like, the next two or three days, mm. I'm just going to mm. sort... Get, get that, and then that when you say get it out, and then just like send it out to the world. Released, yeah, man, yeah, and release. just a yeah. release of a release. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> cool. Well, we can advertise. We can send it on the market mindful earth yeah, like sites as well. Mm. Sick. Mm. Sit upon the ocean. Yeah, we got a whole video, and it's all ready to go, man. 
Wow. I yeah. think I saw the video. That's nah, you walking on the beach or? Just a small clip it, yeah. Ah. Like 45 seconds of a six minute, six and a half minute thing. Six okay. Six and a half minute video. Yeah, it's coming out really, really surely. Nice. Yeah, working on it though. Working yeah. on it. I still got to get like cover art and that shouldn't take much. I okay. want a bit of few photos down at the beach naked, I reckon. Yep. And someone just get to edit over it. But you know that John guy? John. Ah. You should call him. Oh. He'd be keen. He's he's really keen to, like, to help out. He was actually asking about where Gaia was. If he, to, he wanted oh, to do that John photo. with the painting, painted rocks. No, that's uh, Jeff. Is that Jeff? Oh, John's so, the, yeah, yeah. the aquaponics guy that does takes photos. I'm sure you were going to go and do a photo shoot with him. Aquaponics. Yeah, he's a farmer, but, but he's a photographer as well. Mm. I've met so many Johns in the last, <laughs> like, three weeks. It's crazy how many Johns there are in the world because I keep saying... <laughs> it's, just, it's just a very like, common name, It keeps right? going, John, John, I'd John, I'd hate John, to be John. called John. And then, so I'm going to say, my middle name's John. Why would John. you be called my John? My middle name's John. <laughs> 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 what? Why are you John? <laughs> Why would you Another John? Yeah. Yeah, it's very com like I would I'd be changing my name if the, my parents named me John. Really? Yeah, because it's it's just very the same like it's as too you say many. there's so many Johns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's almost like a if I think of John there's a stereotype attached to being a John. I do think <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. It's like you want to break that stereotype. Yeah. Stubby glasses. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But oh, cool. So you got to do a photo shoot. Yeah, at some point. Mm. Hopefully, the next couple of days, I'll find mm. somebody. I think. Um, Who does? Has he? Ah, uh, has he? Yeah. Has he's here? Yeah, yeah. yeah she saw a rock up. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah. She's got her camera. Yep. Like, yeah. Nice. We yeah. could do just do a, like a nude photo shoot down at Hamlin or cozy. I just want it like a photo on the beach I don't know like curled up in a bowl or something mm. like this and mm. yeah I don't know have these ideas but we'll see what the photos turn out like yeah mm. huh so cool. well, I might um or you could like roll down the sand dune or something yeah <laughs> there's like, a huge sand dune at you know cozy. what we can do we can create a crazy fucking video clip for I met this other dude Phil Oh, like, Phil. Do you know Phil? Photogra uh, videographer and yeah. photographer. Yeah, I know Phil, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, of he's course. been here a of few times. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know quite a, quite a few It seems that way. I was, people, you know? I was talking to River earlier. And it's like, you know, the last two years, I've met a huge amount of people. Before that, I didn't know anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. she's the same. It's like there's this, there's this connection happening between all of us. We're all getting to know one another. Yeah, definitely. Way more than, I think... I mean, maybe that was happening in other circles, but for me, I was never in that circle mm. to connect with people. Definitely. It's like, it's, you know, I've never met, I met Fatso for the only, first time, like three days, just before the event. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'd love to get to know him and say hi. Definitely. Know. But yeah, it's like building these connections with everybody. And that's the circus festival is, is so powerful for like just that's I sp you spend the whole Saturday just moving between different people and chatting and and you obviously got three weeks of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like absolutely. how many people did you meet? Uh, right. It's at like least twelve Johns. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. At, l at least. <laughs> and you like that's you you've now after that event you now know a large majority of people in the southwest. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and closely, you know, it was That's a pretty it. close knit thing, especially yep. being there from the start. You met everybody as they were coming in, and then eventually all the artists started rocking up, and you still knew them. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah, cheers. In my flagon. No, it's not a flagon, is it? It's a. Uh, what do you call this cup? A, Chalice? Um, no, that's. Uh, thank you. Good. Thank you. Chalice. No, it's not a chalice. Yeah, I do. Just know a beer mug. Yeah. But this is how you can imagine. This is how the Vikings—they all had their big 
golden fucking mugs. <laughs> and they're just, yeah, and you know, they like cheers, yeah, smash them together. Frothers, <laughs> <laughs> Might have seen that in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So good. Yeah, it's so like what's it, been up? So you've been, obviously, keeping to the... I went off coffee for a week, bro. Oh, yeah? Good. I went off coffee for a whole nice. week. Yeah, cool. Remember, I Was it worth it? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, you got to weigh it up. I, I don't have a problem with coffee because the only time you have a problem with coffee is when you stop drinking it. Like, if, if you admit you're yeah. a coffee drinker, uh, then, like, there's no side effects. I think I did have a really good time off it, though. Yeah. I remember the first time after a week that I had a bit of caffeine was from a cup of black tea. Mm. And, then I, and I had one hit of a vape. And then I was like, whoa, new levels. Nice. You know, like... Just yeah, like you, you felt just that. Like you could just close your eyes and then just drift off and you can just keep going deeper and deeper and mm. deeper. But I'll be able to roll a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's Help it. yourself. Mango. Mango. Please don't stand on the computer. No, he just wants to get in the camera. He's a. This guy's a. Well, you just turn the music up. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's good that he's up here. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon it's a. Like a fucking world class event. Yeah. Like it probably, it's like up there with How other events. How many cabarets did you make it to? The what? How many cabarets did you make it to? Oh, the the last two, the volunteers one, and then the uh, <laughs> the one before that. Did you see Dima and I's performance? Uh what did you guys do? The blue suits. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, actually, I've got some footage of it. Yeah, you want to uh, see it? Yeah, definitely. I'm pretty sure I have. The blue suits. You know what? I remember, like. Are there any filters? Oh, actually. Yeah, there's heaps just over here. Dude, I, no, you know what's funny? I found like 100 <laughs> filters <laughs> in my pocket today. Oh, yeah? Look at this. 100? 100. <laughs> so there's just like 100. Yeah. Huh. Oh, maybe I don't have footage. What's this one? Oh yeah, I do. I remember seeing you in the tribal one. This is the blue suits. I love the... What's the guy's name as the MC? Who was the MC? Oh, for the vault. Oh, Bruce. Is that Bruce? That's Bruce. That's <laughs> so funny. Bruce he doesn't look like a Bruce. Bruce is so funny. Yeah, amazing. An like, amazing singer, plays harmonica. Oh, yeah? Yeah, wow. sings real bluesy. Rock. Yeah, it's sexy. Look at that one. I love that. I think the best part was like... I me, should send that to Darren, actually. Me seeing like all the practice and the lead up to all of the performances yeah. happening. I'd seen this. We were working in the big top on lighting. And uh, I heard them practicing. I wanted to go there because I heard them practicing with the djembe and the didge. Oh. But I didn't know it was for their cabaret. Yeah, okay. And I saw them upside down <laughs> practicing and I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty funny. And then they done it at the cabaret, man. It's like so good. Yeah, I, I thought that was really good because it just shows you what you can do anything. Yeah. You, know, you just got to think outside the box. Yeah. Now I've been like looking at everything as a cabaret performance. Right. Like that could be a cabaret. Like that could be a cabaret. That's right. Yeah. Like yeah. we were getting tent pegs out of the ground for <laughs> one of the tents and it was super hard because they've been in there for like four or five years. Mm. Oh, really? And it was just like a cabaret act in itself just trying to get one tent peg out of the ground with like <laughs> seven <laughs> blokes around with a Well, like a clown number. show. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like uh, I love that. I saw that with the, there's the three cl clowns, the three guys. They did a show at uh, on the Saturday night before the Internationalists. Mm. I can't think of the name of them, but yeah, it's three clowns, and they just had props. 
just like ping pong balls. They did a show out of like moving the ping pong ball, you know, like they push it in uh, one ear and it come out their mouth and then come out the other ear and go to the next person. <laughs> it was just like, and then they had the, the hoops and they made those aqua, I don't know if you saw it, like they made a, a, a diving bell head and so they were under the ocean. Wow. Like just total like pantomime. Yeah, but really clever. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one thing I, we had to sacrifice doing sound and lights is that we had to sacrifice the festival weekend and yeah. seeing everything. Yes. Yeah. So like, I think next time I I might just volunteer, mm. fi- volunteer mm. for this first week and then do the training in the second and just have the festival to yeah. myself. This yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because. Fully I'd love to do the cabaret sound of lights actually again next year, but then just par off with with actually committing because I want to f- have the festival to see all those acts because I see all the rehearsals and things and then yep. just didn't get to oh. do it because I was working. Here we go. Else. I did film it, man. Oh, the blues. Oh, that's so good. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to juggle him. <laughs> Have you seen any footage? I've seen from, like, Zephyr's shitty phone. Oh, because I was right up the front. Dude, this is excellent. I have not <laughs> seen... <laughs> That's too good. All, like, the reserved seating on this side, like, Fatso, Wee John, like, Michaela, all the, the locals, they have reserved seating, so they ah. sit there. And so all they could say about the performance like, you have a nice ass. Because <laughs> I'm facing them the whole time. Uh, kept seeing your butt. And Dima, he's so good at movement. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, wow. He um, practices isolating body parts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that Ido Portel. Yeah, he, he trained with him. Whoa. He trains with him. Whoa. Yeah, man. Oh, mate. Was yeah. he coming over? Dima. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be over tomorrow. Well, let's get him to do some workshops. Yeah, yeah. That's what you talk to him about. Yeah. Doing some workshops. Yeah. He said, yeah, for sure. I'd, he'd happily host one. Huh. He was doing them at the circus eventually, like, oh. from a volunteer. He was doing sound and lights and doing, like, yeah. a an, an, uh, training session for the volunteers. Nice. Uh, like, tw- uh, each, every second day. Oh, wow. Movement. Like, I love cr- yeah, I've so always, cool. I've always wanted, like, I saw that Ida Portel. Did I record the whole thing? Yeah, we can turn it. Shit, I'll send it to you. Yeah, sick. That's cool. We'll I'm wait glad. tomorrow. We'll send it tomorrow. So nah, yeah. do it. Well, otherwise, it's not going to happen. Ah, that's true. You know? It's yeah. like, just get it. Yeah, just get it out it. of the way. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I'll be, like, thinking about it for days. It's like, oh, i got to send that fucking <laughs> video to Monty. <laughs> <laughs> Have I even got you on Facebook? Monty, yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's good to be back here though, Bo. Like, yeah, nice. You know, I, I got to the end of the Circus Festival and I said, <laughs> I went up to Fatso this morning. I said, yeah, I'm going to take off. He said, where are you going? I'm going mine for Earth. But all in my heart, I was like, yeah, I just need a change of energy. Come yeah. back here and it's like the same, like the exact thing that I needed just like yeah. that calm space where yes. you're able to just relax and be yourself I guess mm. you know it's yeah like yeah where the circus is like that it's a, a higher vibration mm. of like just excitement and talent energy like super like international act and talent and like all this different stuff which has oh this other brand of something you know like yeah I fell in love I have that light I so. fell in love yeah. with, I, I, on the Sunday I was in line getting some a coffee and in front of me was this French girl. I started chatting to her. And then her partner came over. And it was the, the French couple, the Cirque du Soleil couple. Ah. Yeah. I don't remember. I didn't get her name. Was it Alex? And yeah. I got, she, I got the business card. But I f- don't know where it is now. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I fell in love. She was a ama- beautiful woman. Yeah. And you see it at this show, it was like, wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you see that, the internationalists? You may not have... I did see that, actually. Yeah, yeah, the it's the, the two girls... Uh, the, sorry, the couple that was... Like, she was holding... Like, uh, uh, 
I don't remember that much of what was I just remember. Was it like a, a circular platform? Uh, slings. Slings. Two slings. And they were spinning in the air ah, together. Ah, yeah. I can't remember who they were. So amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was... Did yeah. you see Alki? Alki. On the hair? Yes. Spinning by her hair. And that was like insane. Well. Yeah. Yeah, she's crazy on the trapeze. So, because that was the cool thing, she's like the center of gravity. Like yeah. she was attached there. Her hair's tied in a certain way, and then she has a ring through the hair that I guess doesn't rip out her scalp. Wow. And so then they attach that to a carabiner, and that goes to like a swivel, and on the top of the. So that's attached to a carabiner, then it's, that's a swivel carabiner, so I can swivel it around itself, mm. and then it goes right up to another pivotal carabiner I don't really know what their name is but they fully like spin themselves around mm. and so she's just on this mm. and I guess it's not ripping out her head no and it's like right through the center of her the gravity so like when she spun like I've never seen anyone spin so fast yeah it's like oh, insane hey, yeah. what about those like massive good night those massive rings uh, did you see those happening the massive rings and he was like Oh, it's in, been... In yeah. Massive yeah. circular ring. Yeah. Man, there's so many. Right. So yeah, that many. ring... Oh, mate, it's so talented. Yeah. It's like how he doesn't run over his fingers every time right. the ring goes I to the ground. I often wondered that. Toes. They just sort of got their hands, Up. their palms out. Yeah, wow. Push, pushing yeah. on the ring. Yeah. Yeah, Rather that... than gripping. Oh, man. Yeah. So good. That internationalist, I think, there was a guy, a Diablo guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mate. Yeah, um... <laughs> oh, what's his name? He, Scooby. Scooby. Scooby, he's a bass player for the the band with no name, the cabaret um, band. Oh, really? Yeah. He was, when I saw his performance, like, he was doing some shit, and he, he was like, I think he was, he nailed it. He didn't make any mistakes, or made one mistake, he dropped once. Yeah. And he was like doing this shit, and he's like, "Fuck that, never works." And just like, <laughs> <laughs> just going for it, right? Like, it's, it's he was go going, time. he was it's going go for time. it. It's all working. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking fly these, yeah. and, and flow. I guess they get that. You get that confidence as well. And it's just you're yeah, in the fl- yeah, the flow, yeah, you're in the man. flow. Just it was wave, really man. cool Ooh. to see, and some of the stuff like he's he's moving so fast, but like at one point he hit. He did it where the, the Diablos are going around in a circle. Yeah. Like, they're just moving. Like, I don't know how the hell. I don't know. And then he knows where the strings are, and then he can just flick it out and Whoa. go again. Man, humans are pretty cool. Yeah, super. We come up with some crazy shit. Yeah. Like, whoever invented the Diablo? Did you see? Um, <laughs> I'm going to investigate. We, do, we were doing the lights. We'd done the lights, like, pre-show for Teo. The dude on the, like, angular silks, like, from corner to oh, corner. Oh, yeah. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. I, did. I didn't get to see this because I was doing a show, I but... did see that. That was I, cool. I done the work. We worked with John. We were just, like, watching John do the lights with Teo and just, like, making all the pink ribbon, ribbon like, light up, just glow, and yeah. then Teo's in this cool as fuck pink and purple jacket. Yeah. And he's just climbing he's cool his thing, dude, just like, dude. wow, man. Yeah. Yeah. He done the ropes, the ropes in the wrestling for Cake as well. The ropes. Oh right, yeah. They're yeah. the. Re- did you see cake? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I the, was sitting up. The wrestling. I was sitting upstairs, looking down. Yeah, where they were wrestling. Yeah. One of the the smaller dude was Teo. He done the ah, silks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, really cool dude. Really down to earth as well. And was he from? Where's he from? Ah man. Teo. And it's super funny because Teo, the dog, too. Tao, Tao. Tao, yeah. <laughs> Tao, that's it. Except spelt differently. I can't remember how his was spelt, but I remember it was spelt differently. Yeah, right. I don't know where Tao. it's spelled, but I can't remember. We're going to call our crypto coin the Tao. The Tao. The Tao. The Tao. Yeah, the Tao, yeah. Excellent, man. Yeah, he's going to be, he's gonna be f- like, that'll be, like, and the, uh, the way I visit, the coin will have a Tao, like, laying on the couch in this, like, really cool... Yeah. Relaxed position. Yeah. You know, the king. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> because like he, the doge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the doge, the yeah. Tao. It'll be the tail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and because tau, tao, like tau is like, you know, the, the uh, I don't know what it is, like that. 
you don't the whole, it's the universe. It's you can't describe it. Because no. if you describe it, then it doesn't, it's not it. That's right. You know? Yeah. I know this. I read uh, yes. Lao Ching, or no, uh, uh, Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu, yeah. Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know the story? Uh, it's actually pronounced Dao. Dao the Dao. The Dao. Yeah, yeah so Tao. Yeah, yeah. Tao, Tao, Tao. Because Tao, Tao. Tao. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought his name was when ah, I first read right. it, man. Yeah. I thought it was like, ta- like Tao, like the Dao. I was like, that's a fucking sick name. And it was spelled differently. I was like, that's right. cool that it's like, he has a separate name, but it's like the name almost. Right. Almost. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. And he's he's... Like, you see how, like, I don't know where he is now. He just does his thing, right? He's just off living with somebody and he moves between all the different people who come and go. And He has the best life. <laughs> He's got a like, good life. So many cuddles and just, oh, like, chilling. Mate. He'll mate. just lay on the couch for hours yep. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got a good life. And he's he's great for this but he's the dog you need for this place. Because yeah. so, I think he goes to visit every person. Yeah. Everyone that's here, like, hello. any new people, he'll go and get a pat. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a special dog. But then, but then he'll go into gear, like when the yeah. when the chooks were getting yeah. chased down by the foxes. Yeah. You know, Jules is like, oi, Teo, yeah. let's go. Yeah. And they sprinted off. Jules and Teo just went off to the chickens and like saved. And he chased the, yeah, saved the two. fox. Just kept going. Chased yep. the fox all the way. Yeah. Just kept going. Jules said he just kept going and going and going and going. I bet. Yeah, man. He, he would have known. Yeah. Yeah. Although we lost Rodney and a few. Like yeah. he, those foxes did a good job. Is it different now? Without the... Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah and I don't... Th- we've got two hens on eggs, but I don't think they're going to hatch. They would have hatched by now. Yeah. So I think it's time now to... Because when they get clucky... They'll sit on eggs until they die. Yeah. To, like, they're just waiting for the eggs to So what to happened hatch. to the ten? To the what? Are there more chooks? No, we've got hatch? two chickens. No, they didn't hatch. They didn't hatch at all. Not yet. Nothing's hatched. So ah, I, I think we'll have to just take the eggs away. And, and they say you, lo- lo- you lock the chickens out of the coop yeah. for a few days and just let them wander and then they'll break that clucky pattern. Yeah. So, yeah, I... It's probably about that time to do that. Maybe we'll get onto that tomorrow. I actually talked to my uh, here we up, go up in Darwin, Lee. He um, raises chickens and things. He has he has his own little sustainable thing up there. He grows pineapples, which is he's really good friends with my sister. So I right. spent a lot of time out at his property out close to Berry Springs. Oh and yeah, uh, Leechfield, Le- Le- Leechfield, Le- Le- Leechfield National Leechfield. Park. Yeah. yeah, he lives out that way. So, but he has like chickens. He has his own bees. Mm-hmm. Like he's growing his bees, and he gets bee inspectors out, and he talks to them. He's like really knowledgeable. They run mm-hmm. like the mango markets. They full like do their own mango chutneys. They do crazy like so good at cooking. They want to. Mm-hmm. They've just bought a truck. They're going to start doing like festivals and things. Mm-hmm. But I was there and just like seeing all their property, just kicking it with their. Like their kids, Charlie, like just like Bush, love the mud. They have a mud pit there. So when the wet season, which is right now, yeah. the mud pit's just sloshing and the kids just go fucking <laughs> deep as and just come out just like, you know, Bush kids. Yeah. Like doing their thing. Like yeah. it, like the old school fucking yeah. go out there, codger sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very good training f- to be adults, I think. Definitely. Learning Definitely. to be in nature and yeah. get muddy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, nice. Okay, it says here Diablo. Who? H- how was the Diablo created? Nineteen ninety four. Mm. David Brevik while at Condor Games. I would have thought even f- like further oh, no. back to nineteen ninety four. Sorry, that's the wrong Diablo. Oh. Diablo <laughs> was a game, he lived. A computer game. As oh, well. yeah, 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 that's true. I remember my... Um, like, 1994, surely not, like, way, way back. Yeah. Like I remember my dad played, was playing Diablo. Surely, like, 1860s or something, like, 1870s. Yeah, no, they would have had a form. Of, they would have had a form of it, surely. Maybe with, like, heads. <laughs> hey? <laughs> but, like, Diablo with heads. What do you mean? Like like using like a Diablo? The the spinny thing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I was thinking the game, the video game. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The heads. 
Diablo. Yeah. Like the spinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to work out when it was invented. But yeah. we're getting confused because it was uh, the game as well. Diablo. What is it just called? Diablo. String, string and Diablo. String. String and Diablo. Diablo. Juggling circus prop. Yes. Consisting of axle. It says here, derived from the Chinese yo-yo. Wow. Spun using a string attached to two hand sticks. Yeah, so it's a, a copy of the yo-yo. Sure. Yeah, when was that invented? It says, the origin the of the Chinese yo-yo is unknown. The earliest mention of the Chinese yo-yo is late Ming Dynasty, 1500 to 1620. Wow. The Chinese yo-yo as Kong Zong. Air bell. They have a longer axle with discs on either end, while the Diablo has a very short axle and larger round cups. So yeah, it was basically copied it from the Chinese. Very cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I was very impressed with that guy. But it's like it happens so fast that it's you need to your mind can't like the memory yeah. you don't remember it. Yeah. You know, it's just like you're in the moment. Yeah. So you're just taking it all in, and then at the end of the show, it's like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and then you just <laughs> hard to remember. Like <laughs> sitting there, like wow, too yeah. many movements of the brain activity to right. work. And then there's actually a human doing that. Right. And then it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like remembering all those patterns. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty cool. I like. I love the on YouTube. There's uh, people are awesome mm. videos. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the compilations. Yeah, and that, like that, that reminds me of the circus. You know, like yeah. people are always doing these. Well, that reminds fuck. me of this place. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, like, the when I, yeah, the first time I came here was just like a whole new world to me. Mm. Mindful of like all these creators coming together, this stupidly talented, and not even realizing these places existed up until that moment you know mm. i didn't know communes existed i've been on the road for three years didn't know communes existed until like four or five months ago where i'd just been kicking it here the whole like six months seven months ago now mm. like mm. Yeah, yeah yeah well that's that's what i've realized this place is it's like a it's a display community it's like a display home yeah like we're not we're not a proper i don't think we're set up right to be a proper community yet. No. We don't have enough buildings and spaces, and but it's an example, a demonstration. So, mm. like, by having all these uh, campers, travelers come through, you know, they get to experience it for a couple of days, get to feel the vibe, mm. and it, it opens their minds to the possibilities of communal living. Yeah, and they realize it breaks down those belief systems of what we're told a community is yeah man yeah and and that's the power of the like that's what we have to do is like introduce it to as many people as possible no i just had a thought like a societal sort of city vibe is literally like people being paid to showcase their abilities and their talents and things but then at the same time it's such a pressure to be in that like state on a stage you know mm. And so people that are super talented don't showcase their abilities. But in a space like this, everybody's allowed to be able to showcase their abilities yeah. and their attributes and their skills that they yep. have for the art and everything around. You know, it's not just on a stage. It's mm. just like all mm. day, all long. Mm. It's just people showcasing what mm. they have and just being free within mm -hmm. their ability to do so because it's such a safe space. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. where performers that take it to that next level where they're on stage they they've already reached a certain level mm. but to get there you've got to i feel like being in a space like this allows you to learn to get to that stage place because you're just in this uh safe space mm. that safe space allows people to express and get better at what they at their art yeah yeah and so you know we're going to have ecstatic dance tomorrow night. Manu, Manu's doing an ecstatic dance. Amazing. Yeah. What, in the dome? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, is it Tuesday today? Uh, it's Tuesday today, but it might be Wednesday now. Tuesday. Oh, it's almost midnight. Or almost midnight. Yeah. Um, 
Look at this picture. This is a Scythian horse, like tribal guy. Yeah, This man. is where we all... Uh, Derive? Yeah, we all come from... This is like the pre europe around. Yeah, just down the bottom there. Some of, I just got this phone. Oh, did you? Yeah. The iPhone died. But yeah... What uh, is this? Samsung? It's a S22 or something? No. It's, it's 250 a, bucks. It's good. That's a big number. <laughs> yeah. S22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Must be good. It must be. <laughs> 22 of the first. <laughs> yeah, so the... Uh, I don't know what we were saying. I lost me. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, S22s before that. Uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Couple exactly. Vikings at the mic. Vikings, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. No. Um. want to finish this bottle with me, but... Yeah, why not? Oh, hey, freedom. You're what's this, freedom? Gentleman. Kiwi. Kiwi fruit. Well, nice. Jason. Wine and kiwi. I don't know how that goes. We'll see it. Give it a go. Yeah, man. I'm, that's one of my things is to drink more red wine. More red wine. Yeah. Odin. Odin drank. <laughs> That's all he drank was red wine, so you might want to. It must take be a good cap off, actually, before you pour. Be <laughs> <laughs> before <laughs> before you pour red wine, take the cap off <laughs> and pour it into the cup, mm. rather than have the cap on. Well, that's very tasty. Do you want some? Yeah. Or sure. eat it all. Mm. Ah, the skin. Mm. Yeah, so bitter. that's the important thing is creating these spaces that allow that creative expression. And so, yeah, so, okay, that's what I was talking about was tomorrow night we've got the ecstatic dance. Yeah, yeah. Manu's good. doing a shiatsu massage training tomorrow at 10. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Salud. Salud. At 10. Mm. 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like beginner shiatsu. So... Shiatsu, and what does this involve? That's you know? a pressure point. It's a, a form oh. of pressure point massage. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's been doing it for 25 years. What was so. his name? Manu. Manu. Yeah. Oh, see, this is the thing. Because you've been away two weeks. Three. This, three. So these guys would have arrived. Oh, they, I think they were here for Christmas. Ah. Oh. Manu's the older guy uh, from Slovakia, I think. Slovenia. Hmm. Interesting. Not familiar, you know. I don't, yeah, I very don't amazing dude. Yeah. And like the cool. He's been on like. They've been. He's done. He's, I think he's travelled the whole world, mm -hmm. looking like doing all these different spiritual paths. Like he's done American. Like he's and he really is uh, drawn to the North American Indians. Yeah. So he's got medicine drum and like rattles. And, I really connected that way and we had a drumming circle uh, last week down the beach mm. and he <coughs> he started singing in like like Native American you know hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah. wow just come out with it out of nowhere and it was so powerful wow mm. yeah how are those drumming circles been yeah oh uh, been keeping up with them or we did two yeah but we haven't done one like the last two weeks so yeah, we need to do another one. I think the full moon's, c or the, what is it? The the no moon? But yeah, we need to, uh, we need to get into doing a few more drumming circles. Like we went down the beach tonight. There's probably about six of us and just had a little bit of a drum and. Yeah, I was going to come to that and then mm. I took some mushies and <laughs> okay, wrote, wrote a whole song, like oh. a whole, whole cover art in my book actually. So good. Um, which, man, I'll just get it real quick. And yeah. I'll, I'll show you in the cover art and I'll just draw it up like okay. just chipping mushies. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> so, Monty is uh, a musician and he's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Lots for words. I'm just uh, trying to do three things at once. 
which is to look at our, make sure our stream is still working. Yeah, so this is the beautiful thing about like, live stream podcasting is just sitting and chatting. Like, I probably wouldn't have sat down with Monty and, and had this conversation if we didn't be sitting here. Just saying that, like, this is the power of, like, having these, like, a podcast space. Yeah. It's like, I probably wouldn't have sat down and chatted with you as for as long. Nah. Uh, otherwise. Definitely. You know, like, always too busy doing other shit. Yeah. So that, there's... I don't know, actually, Bo, we have some, we have some long, like, before I left... That's true. It was actually, you know, I said this to people... Before I left uh, to go to the circus, like four days prior, like every every night, we were the last people up <laughs> just talking every night after mm. night and night mm. because you were doing all this research about bloodlines and all this yeah. different stuff and we we're just yeah. sharing like, yeah, yeah, yeah man. Mm. Uh, that's fun. true. That's true. And just that's like, what that's what I was saying actually. And just drinking like <laughs> three cups of coffee at 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> together. Exactly. That's, that's why I was like, yeah, man, yeah. I'm like seven days off coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah, that's that's what I've realized is like my life at the moment. It, I need to be up early, but I need to be up late. It's like, how do you do that? And yeah. it basically means having an afternoon siesta. And it's like, hey, I want to design my life around that. Up late, up early, have a siesta. It seems to me to be the perfect uh, mango. Mango, you beautiful boy, aren't you? This guy is the most loving cat. He, um, we had two kittens. We got one honey. We had two, a boy and a girl, and the boy disappeared. I think... You know, like the farm life, cats, if yeah. they're if they're like wanderers, you know, if they're out, <laughs> look at you, uh -huh. purring into the mic. Yeah, into the mic. <laughs> um, I can hear that. I yeah. can hear him purring. I can as well. <laughs> you purring into the mic. Um, yeah. This is going to be one it. cat. I even forgot his name now. Olive, no. We've had a few cats, but not all of them, because it's a pretty tough life being on a farm, but because there's foxes, there's neighbours that hate cats, there's like, there's, it's a bit more dangerous for cats. So they don't, they don't survive as long, some of them disappear, and, and one of, so we had these two kittens, and he looked after them, he was like the, the mother, he's so caring, weren't you? And now we've got uh, Honey still here, but uh, the other cat uh, disappeared. So. Yeah. But yeah, the, this guy has just like became their surrogate father. Didn't you? He's like licking them and. Have you seen um the like the wild cats? Like how big they get? Yeah. Yeah. Man, they get they get big. They go feral pretty quick, and like, they they really do. Like like panther sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Like huge long tails. Yeah. And super massive bodies. Yep. When you see them, you're know, like, is that an actual panther? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked into that at one point. There's like these stories of the Black Panthers around the East Coast of Australia. Yeah. And there was stories that the during World War Two, the American military had like a panther mascot that they released into the... That somehow got out, and so the, like the idea that there is panthers gr like living wild in the Australian mm. bush, because you think about they they are super like super hunters. Yeah. And this and the more they spend in the wild, the more they become super like sleuth. So they're hard to spot. They they'd be smart enough to be away from humans. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, you wouldn't see them very often. Unless they want to take you. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's like the Western Australian like lion, like the thigh like a leo. Yeah. As well. The you thigh like scene? Nah, not the thigh like scene. Thigh like a. What was thi it called? Thigh like a leo. Right. And so it's basically this native lion of Western Australia, and it's more like a panther. It climbs trees. Yeah. And it is full the drop bear of Australia. Ah. Uh. It it drops. It waits <laughs> at, on top of. 
uh, like <laughs> pathways yeah. and drops from trees onto their prey. Yeah. And then the, they just, st- <laughs> and that's the thing, they strangle them <laughs> to death. Strangle them. <laughs> yeah. The thylacoleo, which is wow. super, super crazy. They like latch on and then they just strangle, they just squeeze just and like squeeze a and squeeze. Constrictor. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's like yeah. the Thunderbird, like three metre tall emu bitch, pretty much. It's just like <laughs> staunch as fuck. Oh. That's like a thing, man. Yeah. Thunderbird. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw a um, picture of a this rhino that existed like a few thousand years ago. I wish I, I had to save the photo because it was like this beast of a, an animal. Mm. Let's have a look at it. Prehistoric rhino. Well, they had massive wombats too, like three metre big wombats. Yeah. They used to like, just like knock down trees and not knock down trees, but like full like graze up against trees and full make them shake and things. That's how big they were. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. The kangaroo, like the snout faced kangaroo was a big thing. Yeah. And it got petered out. Well, the, the theory is that they didn't actually, look at this fucking thing. Wow, man. Yeah, I've seen these, eh? Look at the horn on it. Like, what a beast. Dude, I've seen <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> so that, that's the theory, though, that like wow. we've been told that, you know, hunters... Show these guys. ...hunted the... Uh, look at that. Yeah, thing. You, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can full see... Oh, oh mango there as <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... The idea. Oh, this is the picture I saw. Imagine how many blades you could make out of that horn, though. You know. Oh. Like so, back in the day, they would have hunted these things and then got their horn and just made like a thousand weapons from it. That's like that's like straight out of Star Wars. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is this world. This is this world, though. Like just like dinosaurs, all the works. See that one. That's not coming up. But but the the theory is that you know we're told that humans hunted them out. Yeah. But there's a, actually a lot of evidence now to suggest that uh the there was a meteor strike that hit like 12,000 years ago, 12,008. I think it's Big Bang. No, they call it <laughs> it's the they call it the younger Dryas event where there was yeah. like the a huge uh Basically, like, a huge melt. Like, the sea levels rose really quickly. Mango, you can't sit on the, c- the keyboard. Sorry. <laughs> Cats love to sit on Mango. keyboards. I don't know why. But they love to... Uh, keyboard, would, keyboard warriors. <laughs> yeah, they... S- I always think maybe it's because they like the, war- the warmth of the keyboard. Go in like they walk across pianos. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ding, That's ding, right. And then they freak out. Yeah. Mango's <laughs> Mango. making noises here. <laughs> <laughs> Makes <laughs> mist. Um, yeah, so the theory is that they actually, uh, a meteor strike hit. and But they haven't found the meteor, uh, the comet, like the, the actual impact yeah so they think what happened like 10,000 years ago <coughs> that North America was uh, like had a, a one kilometer of ice on top of it like it was one kilometer of ice oh. a glacier Whoa. yeah through the center of the North America and they th- that ice sheet it didn't affect any of the earth yeah and and it melted like created these massive like floods oh. like like huge like m- walls of water that just crossed uh, North America, and there's there's a guy like on Joe Rogan. There's a guy Randall Carson, uh, he and uh, Graham Hancock. They sort of travelled around the US and like. Ah, oh, Graham Hancock wrote all the the um, books uh, of like Egypt and all these yeah, different sorts. Yeah, of things. He's yeah. Like, he's talking like we we're a species with amnesia. What is it like mythical? I've got his on. Um, I've been listening. I actually have his on the what's it called or audify on where it's called audible audible okay yeah. graham hancock i've got all his um what are they called sorry uh 
fingerprints of the god. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. These are it. Yeah. So I'm like, I have eight hours left on um, fingerprints of the god. Graham Hancock. But yeah, this this dude. Yeah. These. So two of them. Who was the other guy? Uh, Randall Carlson. Randall Carlson. And he's a really cool dude. And yep. he's done a lot of research on this flood uh, theory that of a meteor hitting the ice cap and melting the shit out of it and mm. sea level rises like really fast this theory that that's when atlantis sunk wow. at that point as well and because the idea is that we were talking about last night like the earth is like a uh, beach ball and you got all this weight of the ice caps on north america and that pushes the opposite side out like it the earth is sort of flex- like a flexible beach ball yeah and all the weight on one side pushes the other the opposite side out which is where Atlantis was and then when the ice caps the weight disappeared into water from ice that subsided the opposite side wow and the land on the opposite side sunk into the ocean yeah so that's just like tectonic plates like working yeah. their magic yeah. And so it's like tectonic plates, like literally feeling it from here. The tectonic plates going boom, 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 boom. And then all like shifting plates to there. Like boom, 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 right. boom. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Like yeah, that. I don't. It's more like flexing. Yeah. But you know, it's like, like, yeah, inward. So, mm. so it's like a big ball. Mm. And then the tectonic plates all like have a ripple effect. Mm. And then go all the way around and then it flexes out the other side mm, yeah or all the way Pretty through much. yeah but through. i don't know if it'd go through well, it's always it's around it's the like crust a, yeah the crust the would crust be the structure would be like making the main thing but all the way through like surely not mm. that'd be hectic to mm. make a ripple effect through the core mm. but like around the tectonic plates yep. around the the base mm. this would happen like yep. and a ripple effect around the mm. center mm. maybe through the center like kilometers mm. deep mm. but surely the core would stay solid you know like this yeah, would just like hold true sure yeah, yeah where the outer crust is like moving it's, it's got that yeah yeah i don't know that's just a, that's just the thought in my head just now yeah no it makes sense yeah yeah and and so that that's what they say that event was it caused the extinction of all the large mammals mm. so that like they they can look at the temperatures uh over that period and like there was a huge drop, was it a drop in temperature for like almost a thousand years? Yeah. Because you th- imagine a meteor hitting the Earth, it sends up all this dust and flames and fire, and it stops the sun hitting the Earth. Mm. So then it cools down. Wow. And that's they think that you know maybe humans went underground at that point, like the like there was a a large die off of everything humans but also all these large mammals and the the mammals that survived were the the smaller ones it's super interesting though mm. that you say that because like you know on a cloudy day how the the temperature of the earth is warmer because the clouds are keeping all the temperature in right but the dust yep was that thick mm. for so long yeah that it didn't allow the sunlight in that's right yeah and it might be like they say that maybe the meteor all that movement caused a lot more volcanic activity as well mm, okay. that, that spews out like they've shown like one volcano can change oh, drop the temperature oh. yeah and like clouds are just totally blacked out yeah yeah and like there's literally no sunlight because there's so many volcanoes and the dust has been created and then also the volcanoes are there to keep going and keep going and producing this black smoke that yeah. the sunlight can't penetrate exactly ah yeah see this is it it says here that 12 9 12900 to 7 11700 years was a return to glacial conditions which temporarily reversed the gradual climatic warming after the last glacial maximum which was 27000 to 20000 years ago uh, the younger, younger Dryas was the most severe and long-lasting of several interruptions to the warming of the planet Earth's climate, and it was preceded by the late glacial interstate. Like this is cool, is like they can through these ice cores 
that they're getting in Antarctica and they can see the change in like uh, Earth's average temperatures. Yeah. Like if you have a look at this image here. So this is where, so what's this air temperature in Greenland? So that's where the ice core was. Somehow they measure the ice core, temp they can get temperatures. So what's the... So this is this impact event. And what so what's 2015, 10? What's the bottom half? Uh, that's years ago. How are you going? Good. We're just talking about some um, <laughs> glacial interactions over the past 20,000 years. That's right. <laughs> uh, the asteroid impact like that wiped out all the uh, large mammals in Australia and North America. Yeah, they they say that it was to do with humans, like hunting, but there's a good indication that it was a, like there was a meteor impact like 12,000 years ago that basically for a thousand years the temperature cooled. And where's your yeah. hat? Anyway, <laughs> where's your hat with your flower? Wow. Super, super strange to see you without your yeah. hat. Without without your hat. hat. And a clown face. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've seen this all for the past. Yeah. yeah. How, how long were you there? Two weeks. Mm. Bit under. I was there for the second week of the training. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And just had this beautiful black hat with a little. What was it? A poppy. Or something? Poppy. Poppy. Yeah. yeah. Why? A, why a poppy? I got it on Remembrance Day. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 11th of the 11th. I thought you might have celebrated the uh, poppy tree, the plant oh. of poppy, because it was <laughs> a it was a revered plant in history. Well, I have a character called Poppy Bubbles. Mm. She blows uh. bubbles. Mm. Nice. Because we ban balloons, boycotted balloons, and we're doing bubbles. Okay, cool. Better for the environment. Yeah, less, less, uh, less. Ah. Mm -hmm. Can you do like long-lasting bubbles? Like hour long? Oh, hour long. Hour long bubbles. Hour long bubbles. Is it possible? Like one bubble hour long. So like if you were to blow up a balloon and then slowly it was to decease itself into non-existence except for its plastic wrap that would toxically impact the environment. Think of that as a bubble hour long. And just one bubble was just sitting there at the top of the roof with helium in it. And then you had like a whole handful of hour long bubbles that would just hold themselves to the ceiling on string. Wow. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you actually do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? I birthed yeah. a bubble and a yeah. child pops it straight yeah. How do we How do we make <laughs> bubbles strong again? So temporary, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's like well, I'm sure we'll find some natural, yeah. homegrown, organic recipe for right. one hour bubble. Definitely. Yeah. I'd, I'd right. love to see it. And so, you, heard right. it. you know Kim? Do you know Kim, the Italian dude? He would love this concept, he right? Would, yeah. He oh, would he love it. He's the one that gave me my first recipe. Oh, really? Oh, he gave me the there we go. Kim. Nice. Kim. Kim. Uh, oh. Shout out to Kim because <laughs> you're an amazing man. Uh, your smile is beautiful and I love you singing and I need to hear you sing some more. Yeah. And some uh, yeah. joke His poetry. Show yeah. Last year was spectacular. Oh, at the circus or oh. this? Yeah. Cabaret? Yeah. Yeah, I heard he done yeah. one, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah, good. It's so special. It's out for. Yeah. It really, yeah. Are you off yeah. to bed? I'm off to bed. Uh, Have you got, so you play the ukulele? Oh, yeah. There's a uh, mic here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sing a song? I'm not, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw and I'm going to bed. Nice. I don't find some warm rainwater. Uh, oh, you can get it out of the tap. That's what I've got. Oh, oh you've got some. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Sweet. All right. Night. Oh, sleep well. Nighty night. Oh, yeah. night. Yeah, so the Younger Dryas event. Look at the... So maybe that's when the meteor hit. See, like they've got it right at the start of the Younger Dryas. And I don't know if we can get the camera on this. No, I need to get that. But yeah, so something happened where the temperature just dropped. Like instantly. Which yeah. indicate yeah. and now they've found a lot of uh, because there's different. Who was telling me? Jeff was telling me. And that. so we're here now. Yeah. 
Yeah, Is that where's? Yeah, zero age. So the temperatures. That's temperatures. Yep. And this is age. Age, years oh. ago. So that's BP before present. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah, you're talking like twelve thousand years ago. Some event happened where it was just like bang. But look at that. Like it was pretty hot there. Like what caused that shit? Mm. That. Well, that's twenty five thousand years ago. AV. Yeah. But yeah, yeah there was an impact and what they've done is they've looked at uh, the layers of the sedimentary layers. Yeah. And there's a point at this time where there's these gra- glass crystals and there's also a particular radioactive material mm. which is what they would expect when a meteor hit come into the atmosphere. And that like there was it wouldn't have been like a small event. It would have been an event where the sky was on fire. Right? The sky is falling. Yeah. So it's <laughs> like crystallized the earth. Yeah. Like the heat involved and the like it just wiped the mammals out. Like there's wow. stories of um, in Siberia, like they're digging up these mammoths that were just like froze freeze dried. Like this event where the cold happened so quickly that the animals just are like in their place. Mm. And they've just frozen. Yeah. Just snap frozen. It's like the caves, man, as well. Like Mammoth Cave just down the road, mm. Margs. In Mar- Mammoth Cave. They found... Mammoth Cave, yeah. You know Mammoth Cave? Yeah. It's on Caves Road. Yeah. They found a thylacine mm. in there remnants of a thylacine yeah. and because it's w- so well preserved like the like the pyramids you know how they preserved in chambers and tombs mm. it's the same thing in this way where the pressure or uh, something or other I don't really know the, the actual terms about it but uh, the air and, and the temperature and the pressure rise like mm. cave systems mm. allowed them to preserve the bodies of these things and they found like proper like bones still yeah. there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Of the animals that like they yep. say thylacine lived on the, in the Australian mainland for a yep. long time. Yeah, definitely. I believe that a hundred mm. hands down. Well, there's down. there's still talk of it being there's the thylacine being in Nana. People still see sightings mm. of it. That would be cool if it was still e- existed. Yeah. Like there's pretty thick bush out there, but I think Tassie. I, I it's hope pushing to God. It, I I hope yeah. to God that there are... Like, I find it hard to believe that all the thylacines were hunted out of Tassie. Because it's really thick bush. Like It's, it's heartbreaking, but it's big a small... Like, you can travel five hours and you're across the other side, you know? Sure. It's a That's small a spot. But the th- bush is... Like, I haven't been there, but I just... Ass- really? The, yeah, uh, well... Like, it's a very thick forest. Mm, I spent a month travelling with a mate um, yep. in my transit, and he had his... He had his, like, tangerine troopy, and we just tailed each other the whole way around mm. Tassie, and, mm. like, didn't it's see super small. Seeds. It's super small, but we did see, uh, we saw a, um, a, uh, well, I saw in, because I was driving ahead at this point, we were going to The Kick, this place called The Kick, mm. because we were heading to, uh, uh, Marawa, mm. which is the beach on the west-hand side, like, the west-hand side of Tassie and it's the main beach there they do surf comps and things and we're mm. headed there and then we're like oh we just want a place to kick it mm. like we said that we're like mm. we just want a place to kick it and we were just looking at Andy had a fucking uh, atlas mm. there that his mum had bought him for his birthday like $200 <laughs> atlas and it's like told you all the maps in the road the mm. Tassie and all mm. of Australia and we were like going along we just want a place to kick it gonna go to Marawa and there was a place called The Kick <laughs> <laughs> no shit It was like Alright we have to go there So we searched this place Just pulled up Kept hitting gates Everywhere we went And then so we just Pulled into this little crevice And just like Set up a campfire Got the swags out And just slept under the stars Kicked it Yeah But when we were driving in there To the kick To <laughs> kick it we s- I, I was in the in the lead And I saw a fucking Tassie devil Like Whoa. in the wild man And I jumped out of my car And like chased into the bush Like didn't <laughs> see it But it was like Grabbed it Yeah Grabbed it Stabbed it Cooked it, it up on <laughs> <laughs> Cut it 
yeah. killed it with a knife. Quickly killed it with a knife, <laughs> and so it didn't have to go through any pain. And then we <laughs> put it on the fire. Nice. And ate yeah. it that night. <laughs> um, nah. <laughs> but yeah, we saw a, like I saw a wild Tassie devil, mm. which is just like mm. you know Tasmanians don't even see wild Tassie mm. devils. You know, I went over oh, there. Oh really? For, they're yeah. pretty rare, are they? Yeah, they're yeah. pretty rare, man. Like, and they're out in the bush. Like, yeah. So that's the thing. That's the right? thing. They are there. Yeah. You yeah. know, but not many people, even Tasmanians, have seen the Tassie yeah. Devil. So, yeah. what about the thylacine I, when they're lower numbers? That's that's my idea as well. And I, I have a feeling that there's people who know where there's populations of them. Yeah. And they're not talent. Yeah. I reckon. It's good. That that would be good. That's so good. Like, oh, that's the world I want to believe in. Yeah. That they still exist. Because they're a They'd pretty cool looking animal. They'd have territory. Because like, they're a marsupial. Like they're a marsupial tiger, you know they evolved to be a tiger, <laughs> but they're like from the kangaroo lineage. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's but they were a predator. They became the you know the dominant species. Man, I wish I brought my. Uh, Do you want to hear a funny story? Second wine bottle up here. Oh, you probably, got another uh, bottle. Yeah, in, in my van. How in far van. away? Are you? A long way. <laughs> That's the thing. I gotta a long get. Way. I said it in the morning meeting. It's like. Uh, we got to get all our bikes fixed. Yes. And the, uh, one of the guys said he was going to start working on them. Because, yeah, we, we need to be riding bikes around. It's yeah, a man. way better way to get around. Because then I could be back here in exactly. three minutes. You could yeah. talk some stuff. I'd be yeah. back here. But then, like, <laughs> if I go there, it's a 20-minute yeah. miss, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I get stuck along the way because totally. there's so many cool <laughs> people. And, That's like, it. Different and you never gyms. arrive back. Yeah, and I was like... Yeah. And where's so it? Bose where's your porter? Here. We need to call the porter. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to go and get it? But I'll be so able to roll another cigarette. Of course, man. Yeah, help yourself. Amazing. The uh, it's funny talking about like coincidences or stories. Uh, I was a guy I work with on the oil rigs. This really cool dude from over east. What was his name? I don't remember. But he said that he. So have you ever heard the green flash? Have you ever seen the green flash of the sunset? The superhero. Have you heard of that? <laughs> no. Nah. Nah. So let's look it up because... Are you talking about like, what are they called? The, the um, from the sun? Flash. What are they called? Yeah. From the sun? The setting sun. Green flash. Oh, here we go. It says here, this is why I love the internet. The green flash and green ray are meteorological... <laughs> The problem is I need to wear glasses these days. And I'm That's no problem. Missing one arm on my glasses. That's even better. <laughs> the green flash, green ray, a meteor meteorological optical phenomena that sometimes occurs transiently around the moment of sunset or sunrise. When the conditions are right, a distinct green spot is briefly visible above the sun's upper limb. Wow. The green appearance usually lasts no more than two seconds. This is crazy. Really, the green flash can resemble a green ray shooting up from the sunset or sunset p sunrise point. This is crazy. And it says... Uh, Bro, you know, the only place that I've ever seen this... <sighs> fuck, man. Is Border that, Village on the Nullarbor. Oh, you saw a green flash? It was a green flash. And yeah. I told people, man. Yeah. I told people it was totally. green. It was green. Yep. There you go. You saw it. I've never seen this. And you even knew it existed. And now this is yep. here. Yeah. So that this guy told me he was in, he, he was sitting in a, on a uh, beach in California and he saw that flash at sunset and he turned around and there was a bar called the green flash. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like maybe that's the you know the best spot to see this green flash. But yeah, he saw it. And look, there's a picture of it. Stages of the green flash. Like I've never seen. Is that what you saw? No. Like that? That's definitely not what I saw. Nope. The mock mirage. Like that one. Whether that's true. No, nah, I just, just saw, saw green. Look at that. Like that? Yeah. No. Nah, no. Nah, nah. This is different. Yeah. That's fucking, and that's something. Could you imagine though. seeing that? Mm. I wonder if that's I just saw that's green. the sun there, right? It just turns green just at the end. I don't have that light in there. Sure. I I um. I was watching the sunset the other night, 
and I I found that that last moment before the sun disappeared and then it disappeared there was a it's a really uh there was a really powerful moment wow yeah 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 yeah, yeah the just egg yolk last minute for the horizon yeah like yeah it was just poof. man like the first time this is what i'm talking about the green at uh, the border village across the nullarbor where i broke down mm. and spent a couple of months there but there was two it's nights so interesting you you've been you were drawn to the nullarbor yeah yeah. Because we're going to build a... a uh I was joined to Margaret River. You know, I what? spent my first night in Margaret River. Like, I told myself at the start of the year, I wanted to get a place in Margaret River. Yeah. And then I was done traveling around Tassie, and then I came out, and then I finally got Drawn across the Nullarbor. Mm. And I said, I'm going to get a place in Margaret River, have a band in my lounge room. <laughs> <All this t> <laughs> yeah. This is no, f like, no word of a lie. Have a band in my lounge room. I just want a drum set. I want everything set up so that we can we can jam straight away <laughs> you know as soon as we get home we can Mate. jam straight away the first night in margaret river boat jack yeah said you yeah, know there's yeah, a sick there's a cool jack. there's a way better place to stay like let's and then he took me out here and he brought me out here at night like after he finished his shift at 10 and i just looked at the stage like <laughs> are you kidding me uh, like 20 20 25 minutes from margs yeah just like you man, so you you manifested this place. Yeah, I yeah, and that's life. For me. Mm. Uh, like I just, mm. I guess it's a flow for everybody. But yeah, and you know, in within yourself too, it's like you're you're happy to accept that, and happy to tell yourself that you're in the flow of it, yeah. where everything's just working out for yourself, and you hope that for everybody else as well. But you need to like voice that and say like mm. everything just works out for me yep. some way or another and I have no reg mm. like shame around saying everything works out for me mm. because everything mm. does when you believe that it does you know and so and that's the beautiful uh, thing have yeah. you ever heard of abraham hicks mm -mm. i'll put her on she's and I've she uh, says she's hang on i'm yeah. running out of uh hello 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 oh that's your one yeah, hello hello you. hello that's better Cool. Can you Pardon hear me? me? Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, cool. So Abraham Hicks, she, that's her mantra. Everything is always working out for me. Yeah. And oh wow. Everything. It's like a always working out for me. Here we'll put it on. Abraham Hicks. Thirteen minutes. That's a bit much. She's uh, a she channels a particular entity but she's very uplifting and very mm. positive things always working out this is uh, i find a lot of people like americans are so good at voicing how they feel about themselves like mm. presenting themselves in mm. what they want to be presented as and Australians are really withdrawn and like mm. scared to yep. showcase their sure things you yeah. know yep and I think that's the nature of America. Like the Americans, uh, it's a, competi a competitive world. Turn yours up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a competitive world. So like there's more competition in the US. There's 320 million people. They're all trying to get ahead. Yeah. So you have to stand out. You don't have a fucking option. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you up. hold back, you don't get to, wow, you don't man. get to play the game. Wow, <laughs> that's the beauty about Australia, 25 million, you know, like yeah. 26 million maybe yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and people have said about WA is like, we are so behind, there's so many opportunities here, like the US, it's cutthroat, competitive, capitalistic, you know, like everyone's trying to get ahead, where <laughs> WA, we're still like this sleepy state, like there's, there's not, people are not taking the opportunities that... And so there's a lot of opportunities here yeah, to create so much different <coughs> cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which is what you're doing, Bo. That's it. Keep it happening, bro. <laughs> it's fantastic to see this and so mm. privileged to be a part of it. And mm. like these podcasts even help clear thoughts from your own mind, like just talking between two people that get it, you yep. know, as well, like yep. understand 
life doesn't have to be that way and mm. also creating a space for amazing people and to be able to share and express yourself in every every way possible mm. and these podcasts man fuck. Mm. yeah you see the power in the so like, good. conversation yeah and yeah. keep it, and getting it off your mind you know yeah and i guess yeah. that's, that's the biggest part like mm. when we go deeper and deeper and deeper into a conversation we're unlocking and and questioning things that we don't often question because we don't get to the point of questions deep enough mm. within our own mind. Yep. And so when there's a person there to just like mm. talk between one another mm. and bounce mm-hmm. these ideas off, it's like mm-hmm. creates a whole mo- more opportunity of imagination. Mm. Very much. Yeah. And that's the power of community because you you are talking to people all the time. You're always sharing ideas and swapping and so you always you grow really fast. Yeah. And and then when you sit down in this and this is the idea of like uh, sitting in circle and just talking. Yeah. This is what the the people of the of old would do. They just they had more time so they'd sit and just talk. Yeah. And and that's how I think that's how we grow really fast. Nine AM deliveries. Nine every morning. What, delivery of what? Delivery of speech, delivery of communication yeah. here right now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mindful and Earth. Yeah, each and morning, 9, yep. 9 a.m. meetings. It's 9 a.m., yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they've been going really well the last, like, the last week. Uh, been getting maybe, like, most people have been coming. Yeah. And it's been, it's, it's cool because it brings everyone together and then they just chat and it's very laid back, but it's uh, bringing people together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you really see the power of it. It's, mm. it's been good. I, I've been really enjoying the meetings in the morning. Mm. But talk. Oh, we got a. I was. We had the yoga this morning, and um, we was talking about that because we got that fire pit in the middle. Whereabouts? In the dome. Ah, underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little Is fire Is it opened pit. up yet? No, we just got to lift the pallets off. There's two pallets you've got to move, and then there's we built a, like a round fire pit with yeah. bricks. I've heard about it. So we we just need to create an event. That we, I want to do a men's circle, actually. So maybe yeah, we has could that like, not happened? Hey, not has yet. That, no. Oh, excellent, no. man. I've wanted to... I've seen posters in Margs about men's circles and things like this, and I was oh. almost willing to go up the road. So I'll turn my phone around. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, so we'll, we need to start doing them here because it's, it brings everyone who's here together as well. Like, that's an important thing, especially the guys because, you know, we need to all sit and chat and get to know each other. Yeah. So, yeah, need to put that on the schedule, men's circle, and we'll run men's it. Men's circle. Uh, yeah, and then the women can do a circle and then we'll have a, uh, like, a communal circle as yeah. well yeah 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 definitely bring, bring the women and men together yeah because we we've got to work that out too like we don't like that interaction between men and women is has been sort of corrupted i think as well definitely, mm. definitely. so we've got a lot to learn about yeah. communing with each other mm. so yeah men's circle I'll, i might write that down now while i think of it Yeah, nice. How's things been? Last yeah. three weeks anyway here. Because, uh, yeah, I haven't, you know, I've been around for a while now. And, yeah, going away. I think that's the longest time I've spent away from this place. Mm. I've, I've been going like You've two weeks off, get, yeah. two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks there, two weeks there, two weeks there, two weeks there. Hell yeah. And I, I think that's the real, the best way to do it. Yeah. You know, come and go. But you, you know this is like a home space. Definitely, bro. I've been using this as my base. And, you know, giving back as well, you know, like mm. anytime anything like needs to be had, like I'm happy to put money into this and, and I'll put money there or or just put time in or yep. use my body to work. Mm. And, and it's an amazing space to be able to, I guess, have a, you know, you create purpose for everybody, mm. you know, mm. all of a sudden somebody has a purpose like even cooking or like Mm. even like digging or weeding the garden there's like purpose behind that Mm. person's life all of a sudden they're like Mm. communally Mm. interacting with people doing the same stuff and Mm. looking for purpose in their life Mm. it's fucking Mm. so good man Mm. so good yeah just being able to use it as a base like i can 
Oh man, I can't actually thank you enough. Mm. Though. Mm. Mm. It's fucking mm. Beautiful, oh, it's beautiful. My pleasure. Oh, absolutely, my pre- pleasure. Yeah, I'm I'm living my dream at the moment. You know, like being able to meet such amazing people coming through here. Yeah, I don't have to go anywhere. You know, it's it's really a perfect thing. Yeah, yeah, expanding through every conversation, and that comes back to like that. It's all about talking with one another and sharing stories and getting to know. Like, we've all lived these different lives. Yeah, and like, we've all got little ideas on like life hacks we've got life wisdom to share and that's where we really grow together by Definitely. by doing this like storytelling yeah and i think that's how it was in the past that we had more time so we'd sit around and like talk and you know, share share wisdom yeah mm. i don't know i'm talking to the viewers <laughs> We have any here now, or <laughs> any previous viewers? <laughs> like uh, I first met Bo, we were I'd come out here, and then in the morning, I'd first met Bo by Jack. We were riding a bike. I was sitting on the front of the bike, and Jack was like pedaling yeah. through the through the f- long grass with like flat tires, and he was just like pedaling hard as. And then we went and met you, yeah. Bo, yeah. at uh, the you were pan- planting the blue gums. Yeah. Um, and the horses, the spirit was there. Spirit, that was the only horse here. Spirit right. was the only horse here. Yeah. And you're like, come on. And I was like, the first time I met Spirit. And yeah. and so you were just like trotting, like in the ute, like cruising along. Spirit was following and yeah. we were like riding alongside you. And That's right. Yeah, man. It's yeah. so good. And that's, that was a long time ago now. Five, <laughs> five months. It's just like. Five months? I reckon. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Five months, man. Wow. How wow. crazy is that? months yeah time is time is um seems irrelevant here like i don't i don't pay a lot of attention to the time but like yeah five months goes yeah yeah that's probably even longer i don't even know the time that's the thing Mm. Mm. exactly like i don't can't even really remember Mm. what i actually like what sort of month I got to bide for because that had just dropped into this place of time is irrelevant yes. and time is just like yeah. non-existent yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Like days, sorry. Time is relevant, Yeah. but days of the week and yeah. days in the months and the like the years, yeah. literally a whole year. Yeah. It's, it's a new year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. like I remember always having to write down the year. Is it 2023 now? Yep. I haven't written that, had to write that down at all. Wow. You know, usually you got to sign your yeah. name and a date. You always think, but yeah, I don't think I've even contemplated that it's 2023. And I'd probably <laughs> still write 2022 if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I probably would as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2023, it's going to be an amazing year. Definitely. Fucking wild year, I, I feel. Who knows what's going to happen? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I know all good good things are are, are happening. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all I know. It's my birthday pretty surely. Oh yeah. What's the date? Yeah. What's your birthday? Twelve days. Twelve days. Thirtieth of Jan. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> yeah, my son Hayden's twenty fifth. One day before Australia Day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm hoping he comes over soon. You, you'd love him. You, you'd Where's he at? He's in Japan at the moment. Wow. Teaching English with his girlfriend at a ski resort. <laughs> so you have it. <laughs> he's got he's got the right idea. Yeah. Like he was a he, yeah. Like he um, he was lucky enough. His mum was his grandparents from his mum's side had a ski like a little uh like a little apartment in, in Jindabyne mm. so he he was able to go and hang out and live up there and he became a ski instructor and then he tr- spent a couple of years travelling to Canada and teaching s- like uh, skiing to kids wow yeah and then he wow. hurt his knee and then he went back to he went to uni and uh, became a secondary teacher he just graduated cool man and then he's off to Japan and the plan is that he's going to come over here. He's like he studied outdoor education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and there's a huge outdoor education center just in Caradale. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so I'm hoping it. that he'll come over and get some work there. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Have a few conversations on the potty. It'd be awesome. And yeah. so what's this one called? Is this the bow it's, show it's or is this the... This is uh, the bow show, How to Change the World. How to Change edition. the World. Yeah. Excellent. So it's just a nightly, nightly show. But this is this is called The Lighthouse. Yeah. So the idea is that, like, not... We'll have to light it up then. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 We it even... It. Even at this... How's that lamp? That lamp used to be... Yeah, the, it fell off and the bowl broke, so I've... Actually, I think I need to write that down. Yeah. There's What's a... This men's circle? Something. Here. Right here, Bo. I've got a little list here of, like, things I need to buy. Light globe. Light globe for mum's camel lamp. Light globe. Cool, yeah, so he hasn't been here for... And you know what was cool the other week? We had a, a couple of campers here. And they know Hayden. Like f- through a friend of a friend. Because yeah. he, he studied in Maruchidor. So... Uh, he wow. did his, you, yeah, yeah, he chose Maruchido. He's like, that's the best place to be at uni because of the surf and the yeah. lifestyle and the, and the weather. So, yeah, he spent for the last four or five years there. And, uh, yes, there was a, a, a group of uh, guys here, and they're like, we know your son. Wow. <laughs> no way. I know. Yeah. I know. It was so cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Hayden. Hayden, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's... I'll show you a picture of him, actually. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, so... But that... Like, he was... When I left his mother, when we separated... Like, I was just a kid. Because he was born when I was 19. Yeah. And I was, like, a, just... I was a kid. How was the mother? Uh, she was 18. Yeah. Yeah. We were second year uni. Wow. We wow. were we were b- b- boyfriend girlfriend and yeah know, like so uh, my mom she was pregnant at fifteen. Wow. F- with you? No, not or me. Or your sister? My older sister. Yeah. Ah. Different dad. But then like two years later, had a daughter with my dad. Okay. So like they're super old, like forty five, like forty three. You know, like t- compared to me, where I'm. 22, yeah. like turning 23, yeah. and like they could be my mum, you know. So that your mum's now 40. No, that's my sister. Sister, okay. Yeah, so my mum's 62, oh. 63 now. You know? Still young. Yeah. In a way, right? 60's yeah, but not so like I'm 20, I'm almost 23, and my mum's 63. Yeah, so, okay. You know, so like she like was 40, old. 40, 39. <coughs> Wow. me, and so my sister and my mum were pregnant at the same time in the same hospital, having their babies, wow. which is my niece. So I'm a younger uncle. Wow, here you go. Here's yeah, that's Hayden and his Hayden. girlfriend. <laughs> we got the he's rocking the mustache, <laughs> and he's got. I think you you jive well with him because he's yeah same same sort of same age. Oh, he's a, he's older than. You actually, excellent, Hayden. Yeah. How old is he? Twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm looking forward to him coming over. I feel like I can. Here you go. Here's a picture of him in in Japan. Top of the hill. Nice man. Yeah. Yeah. I I love living through other people's uh, experiences and adventures. Yeah, no, it's cool. I think that's the thing, b- big thing for my parents as well, and just like family and friends around me, I'm like mm. off doing my own thing, but at the same time, you know, this encourages them. Oh, it's too, like you know, 100%. and it keeps them kicking. They're like seeing seeing things in my life, and that that contributes to their happiness, which is amazing. Uh, I agree. Yeah. 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 You you inspire others by the life that you're living. Hmm. Especially uh, from a son's perspective as well, you know, like in a father's perspective, it's like this person that you've given birth to, like this is your offspring mm-hmm. and they're doing these amazing things. Yeah. You're like really, really 
Yeah. Yep. Like I couldn't imagine the feeling that you'd have, and I couldn't imagine the feeling that my parents would have either. It's just like this whole whole new feeling of just like pr- being proud about this person doing these amazing things with themselves. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And I always that's what you want with your children. You want them to experience the world more than what you had. Yeah. That's almost like there's a natural evolution. It's like you're on the right track if. <laughs> your children are have more than what you had yeah that's that's opportunity the, as well yeah, yeah that's the aim is to give them more than what they what you had yeah yeah and so when they start to exp- have that it's like you're very proud of that if they're out exploring the world and it's amazing. like really living yeah 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 and it, it's interesting he's always been like he he was lucky he's um he grew up in melbourne uh, well, you know Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm Ballarat boy. Right. So yeah. he he went. I initially when I first finished uni, I my I got a, a job. Uh, I'd been like doing work experience at this company, this oil and gas company. And when I graduated, I went. Uh, they hired me, and they moved me. We moved to like uh, Melbourne. Yeah. Into Cheltenham. I don't know if you know Cheltenham, like Bo mm. Morris. It's quite a wealthy area. Yeah, right. And uh, Hayden's mum, uh, Penny, she was a school teacher. She was at uni with me while I was doing engineering. She was doing school teaching. So she eventually, she took a year off when Hayden was born and then went back to uni. And Hayden was like at the creche at the uni. Like we just dropped him off and we'd go to uni. <laughs> yeah, and so wow. she graduated and... Uh, and I graduated, and then she got a job at um, Mentone Grammar, yeah, which was like one of the top schools in yeah. in Melbourne. Grammars, yeah, definitely. yeah. And he he because she taught there, there's like it's free education for the pe- teachers' kids. They get to go to the school. Wow. Yeah, and but there is a tax. You got a fringe benefit tax. You got to pay half the the, the school fees, but still allowed him to go to this amazing school Definitely. and he met like had really great friends and like met some really amazing like a really good good group of people yeah core core group yeah. yeah yeah and uh so that was a great experience for him i think it really he, he really excelled in that but he was one of the only ones who broke away from that societal you go and go to uni and get a job and like go to uni get a career and then get a job yeah right. yeah he 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 went the opposite way which was like oh i'm gonna go and explore and travel and become a ski instructor type thing yeah so that was i was always proud of him for that because he he broke away from that because of the the pressures of like schooling it's like that's all they tell you is like go to uni mm. and then become a career teach you how to not fail right which is like the most important step in mm. understanding the world is mm. failure you yeah know, like they teach you not to fail it's mm. like there's big pressure around you have to do your best work you have to succeed and you have to be this but then there's like that other factor where they're also telling you if mm. you fail mm. you're, pr- you're fucked right <laughs> you know it's like yeah. this and then but that's the biggest learning understanding that I've learned from my life is like mm. every mistake is a learning opportunity, but it's whether you take that opportunity to learn about that mistake that is the most important fundamental about that quote is like every learning mistake is an opportunity. Yep. Every yeah, every mistake is a learning opportunity, but it depends on if you want to learn from that mistake. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so, but failure, there's no, there is no failure. there's no, there's no failure. Yeah. There's no between. Well, uh, like I, I, I like, mm. like even if you fail, like you're learning from exactly. it. Right? Exactly. Right. It's that you're learning to the next time you won't do the same thing. Yeah. And that's what life's all about. It's just like we're we're on this like spiritual journey to expand our consciousness, and the only way to do it is to actually live it. Yeah. And do it. Yeah. That's really the only way. You can read books and tell you how to be, but <clears throat> ultimately you've got to like just do it. Mm. 
<clears throat> and you think about like how you've grown in two weeks or three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Think about the experiences you've had because you were like living life, mm. like throwing yourself in. That's the a deep constant end. thing. Yes. In my life as well is like, you know, there's nothing, there's no one else but me, mm. like mm. to provide for myself, and mm. like I can't fall back on anybody. You know, I don't come from this family where they're able to just go all right here's some money mm. you know like mm. if i'm done like mm. if i'm out there in the sticks with nothing like mm. i can't rely mm. really on any back job mm. you know and, and in some ways that's a, a good thing yeah and it's like you have to you have to do mm. it mm. you have to yeah There's you can't no you can't rely and that's what they say like money especially like inherited money or like money that from a you li- born in a rich family like yeah you, you it sometimes can be a curse mm, definitely like i've a, seen this yeah yeah i remember joe rogan talking about it he's like saying that you know a lot of the people he knows that really are kicking ass in the world are the ones that come from the tough struggle street yeah because they know how to like hustle and they know how to like really push but someone who's had everything mm. they tend to be not driven yeah yeah because i think it's like you're having to push without any insurance Mm. you know i think it's Mm. that thing is like right you have to push through that barrier break that barrier Mm. but you've got nothing there to catch you if you Mm. fall right so you have to do it yeah and you have to push through it and you have to jump and take the leap you know it's like that but like if it's you know you come from a wealthy family you're able to take the leap Mm. But then if you drop, you know yeah. it's fine. Yeah. So then there's less incentive to make it actually happen. happen. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So even though you think that you've got no support, there's a, there's actually, that's a good thing. Yeah. In, in many ways. Yeah. Definitely, man. That's a, development. I feel, yeah. Yeah. I feel like about this place, like with Mindful Earth, it's like, there's a lot of, unknowns and we're seeking funding and to make this place like really um, shine and ex- like just grow super fast yeah. uh, to just to for all the dreams and th- how we can set this place up uh, we need funding for that so because we don't have funding and there's a there's a pressure to like if I, we don't find funding in the next couple of months, then we'll have to sell this place. Yeah. So th- that pressure makes me, it just drives me to be doing this podcast and to get the message out there. Mm. Like, it, it, so it's a good thing. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't do it. Like, I, it doesn't, yeah. what are you, you're a ama- <laughs> Just bringing all these little treats along yeah, at so different times. Thank you, man. Butterscotch. Lolly. Straight when the kiwi fruits run out. <laughs> yeah. like butterscotch, bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Mm. Oh, it's been dried. Yeah, so oh, you get... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you get on that... Get to this point Thanks where you're just like... Brother. Thrown in the... Um, there's no... There's no other option. Mm. You're off the... You jumped off the cliff. So you... You just got to like swim. Sink or swim. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah. that... So then, then you start to like hustle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's no in between. Have no you bow. have you heard of the hoodie? Udi? The Udi. Yes. Okay. So do you know that's a guy? Design from Adelaide. This young guy, your age, set up the Udi. And I saw a little documentary. On him. Cool dude. It says him. Like, just this really young guy that just come up, and he he talks about how he had a before like three or four businesses that all failed. Yeah. But he kept hustling, and he and he <coughs> just like invented the Udi, which now I think he's like probably a multi billionaire. Oh, man! It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Just the comfort body doona. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so it's all about this uh, idea. What do you sleeve blanket? That's not right. I'm looking at the wrong thing. 
Beat the man behind the Woody. 26 year old Aussie. Yeah. Oh yeah, it says here, he failed six business ventures before stumbling upon the wearable blanket. <laughs> yeah, the wearable blanket. That would soon become a multi-million dollar empire. David Fo- Davy Fogarty, 26-year-old guy from Adelaide, tried everything from selling headphones on eBay to punching out Vietnamese rolls before he created what many have labelled to be the ultimate COVID lockdown accessory. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he... It would have been perfect. Perfect. Like COVID would have <laughs> come along, and he's like, and everyone's sitting everyone's at home. Everyone's at home. Like, I want to be warm. Like. Right. <laughs> and online purchasing. Yeah. Well, that's him. Door. That's this is guy. Just this young dude. You know what, bro? Might have to leave it here. I want to go play some guitar. I reckon. Oh, please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, yeah some, play some tunes and. Nice, man. But yeah, it's fucking. Good yeah, com- coming into the podcast again, you know. Like I saw you just getting it started. I walked in right <laughs> as you were starting the yeah. podcast. I was like, oh, I'll jump in on that a little bit later. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's good. It's amazing how conversation flows when you're in this like this little little um, bubble lighthouse. In a lighthouse. <laughs> well, that's what we talked about. We have like a there's this old TV show called Get Smart. Okay. You ever seen it? Get smart, and there's like uh, heaps of funny little skits. No, of them jumping through windows. I'll show you. Get smart. And they're like detectives and shit. They yeah, they're secret agents. Secret agents, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the cone of silence? Nah. Let me show you. But I'll do like zip this lines be across the... windows and like funny as little. This will be yeah. <laughs> these yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah so yeah. this is. Uh, the cone of silence. This is what we're going to create here. Turn the sound off. Oh, it'll go through the speaker, actually. It's like whenever there was any secret stuff to talk about, they'd bring the cone of silence in. <laughs> it's like it drops down from the roof. Have a look. This is what we were planning to make outside, was it? Yeah, like yeah. the podcast studio. Yeah. And it just drops yeah. down around the outside. Yeah. Or you can have it raised. Yep, so people can listen in and stuff. The cone of silence. <laughs> ah, yeah, the cone of silence. The cone of silence. Hang oh, on, let's I scroll through. This now. Here we go. This is it. This is what we're going to create. Here we go. Huh? <laughs> 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 so good. <laughs> I love it. What's these things on the top here? This is where we need to have like camera where we can point it to the screen that's amazing that'd be so cool <laughs> <laughs> so even if there's a huge party going on it's still like it, silence. Yeah. it's like a booth yeah <laughs> so we're gonna do that all right, all right okay off you go off i go thanks man i'll give you a big hug beautiful we go on oh, jump up mad seeing you again oh, though. So, oh, super super so, good so good Good to be back having these conversations as well. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's carry on here. Oh, yeah, what am I going to talk about now? That's the question. There's so much. So much. So there much. really is. But yeah. We, we which we, rabbit hole are we going to go down? We'll get the light. The Men's circle. The lighthouse. Men's circle. Yep. Yep. And a cone of silence. All right, Bo. Nice, Monty. Thank you. Fish. Cheers, dude. <laughs> Cone of silence. So we're going to create a cone of silence. How to change the world. Part 14 we're on right now. I don't know. The way I see it, we've got one watching, and I think that's me. (laughs) So it's like I wish there was 100,000 viewers on this right now. And how do we get to that point? So we will get there. We really will. Okay, you can hear me there? Yeah, I'm just uh, turning Monty's microphone off. But yeah, we, we will get there. We will 
get the followers and I really look forward to being able to interact with people on the chat live chat messages and I look forward to being able to answer and discuss topics that you guys bring up as we uh, commune, commune together from all over the world I want to start advertising this this, this uh, podcast in a way that but I first I want to get a, a whole heap of uh, content up and we're starting to get there we've been sort of streaming since pretty much since 2023 rolled over it's been the um, I basically we we were uh, we were casting as 2023 came in and to me 2023 is going to be a, a big year for these live streams and we are doing pretty good We've probably got about what how many i don't know anyway 12 12 13 podcasts already and it's the 18th of january so all right i gotta go for a, a pee and i'm gonna get a coffee what i'll do is leave you with something to listen to let's see what we can find because there's so much cool content out there. Maybe we can educate you into the life or something new that you've never thought about. Let's put a TikTok video on. I'd like to be left alone today. Unless you have a... One more step towards your journey. Now. Just What's this one? Your ex jumps um, into a real bound relationship. Oh. <laughs> I love this lady. Okay, have a listen to this while I go for a piece. It starts with a magician. Oh, I don't know why I wanted to do that. Maybe it's this. Oh, I don't know why I wanted to do that. Maybe it's this. Oh, maybe it's this. There's full moon energy, there's manifestation energy is what it is. It's like there has been a rebirth. There's a lot of swirling around you right now. A lot of pieces that are coming into place. And the and what you do with that is really step towards your passion, that which you enjoy, your creativity. You hold the magical wand and you're you're wielding it with this total respect and love for life and you're uh you're really a way shower right and you're really it's like you're leading the way my darling you have a lot of skills like you're i feel like this is like your spiritual self like you have these very powerful magician energies with merlin showing up could be like from past lifetimes you may have done a lot of healing work this lifetime you have a lot to show you have a lot of inner wisdom and you're showing up as the maid of staffs so that's really just this very free-spirited energy that's moving forward in the direction that you're being called your creativity is being called and you can trust and know that you're making the right steps because of this you have a lot of wisdom intelligence backing you okay oh. <laughs> lucky one card for you from the tarot deck that I love. The made of stats with the magician. Oh. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with a lot of people. I speak to uh, tons of people, and I'm in the dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me. But most people can't. That's masculine and feminine, by the way. People can't. Most women don't go in and out of that dynamic. And I think that what she, everything she said was good, except for I think a woman needs to love herself. Yes, obviously. If a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself, she's not going to love and take care of you. Duh. That's like obvious. But I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with 
a lot of people, I speak to uh, tons of people and I'm in a dominant role when I'm, when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me. But most people can't, that's masculine and feminine, by the way, people can't, most women don't go in and out of that dynamic. And I think that what she, everything she said was good, except for, I think a woman needs to love herself. Yes, obviously, if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself, she's not going to love and take care of you. Duh, that's like obvi. But I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with a lot of people. I speak to uh, tons of people, and I'm in a dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me. But most people can't. That's masculine and feminine, by the way. People can't. Most women don't go in and out of that dynamic. And I think that what she, everything she said was good, except for I think a woman needs to love herself. Yes, obviously, if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself, she's not going to love and take care of you. Duh. That's like obvi. But I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with a lot of people I speak to uh, tons of people and I'm in a dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me but most people can't that's masculine and feminine by the way people can't most women don't go in and out of that dynamic and I think that what she everything she said was good except for I think a woman needs to love herself yes obviously if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself she's not gonna love and take care of you duh that's like obvi but I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with a lot of people I speak to uh, tons of people and I'm in a dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me but most people can't that's masculine and feminine by the way people can't most women don't go in and out of that dynamic and I think that what she everything she said was good except for I think a woman needs to love herself yes obviously if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself she's not gonna love and take care of you Duh, that's like obvi but I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with a lot of people I speak to uh, tons of people and I'm in a dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me but most people can't that's masculine and feminine by the way people can't most women don't go in and out of that dynamic and I think that what she everything she said was good except for I think a woman needs to love herself yes obviously if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself she's not gonna love and take care of you duh that's like obvi but I think that the commitment that she has to you should be like the commitment she has to God. Like her level of servitude and submission and surrender and sexual, like her way of giving herself sexually should be that of what she does in church to God. Most women cannot flip roles. I'm one of them. I, I don't claim to have the business success you do. Obviously, my work is quite different, but I still lead, you know, retreats with 
lot of people. I speak to uh, tons of people, and I'm in a dominant role when I'm when I'm teaching because I have to present the more Shiva energy so that people respect me. But most people can't. That's masculine and feminine, by the way. People can't. Most women don't go in and out of that dynamic. And I think that what she, everything she said was good, except for I think a woman needs to love herself. Yes, obviously, if a woman doesn't love her and take care of herself. Life. One could receive several different answers. In physics, light is electromagnetic radiation, described as a stream of particles, photons, each traveling in a wave-like pattern, carrying energy and moving at the speed of light through space. One can see some of this light, but not all of it. In quantum physics, light appears to act like waves when you're not watching, but acts like particles when you are, so it's hard to know exactly what you are seeing. In quantum physics, the consciousness observing the light determines what light is. To the everyday person, light is something important that illuminates the world so they can see. We think a better understanding of light is given by the spiritual master who understands light to represent the divine. Masters of light know that light is everything that exists. It allows one to see around them in the everyday world but also allows them to see into other realms. The master knows it's about seeing in a higher way by being aware and conscious. The Pleiadians call light information. Light is the informational field that makes up the entire universe. A primary Pleiadian teaching says, light is information, and darkness is the lack of information. Quad. A wealth of sacred knowledge is held within this one statement, about the nature of the universe itself and humankind's true history and current state of affairs. When one is in the dark, they have no access to information. Therefore, another term to describe darkness is the word hidden. When someone is in darkness, the light of information is hidden and withheld. The first modern Earth humans were created 350,000 years ago by advanced geneticists from the Sirius star system. These first Earth humans were created to intentionally have lower levels of consciousness and ability so they could be easily controlled and work for their creators. Though a perfected 12-stranded DNA template was used in this creation process, 10 of humanity's 12 primary DNA strands were intently left in dormant mode, and only the first two survival DNA strands were left in place. Modern humanity's DNA was unplugged initially, and they were plunged into darkness with no information. They had no awareness of what had happened to them, which is the ultimate state of unconsciousness. The good news is that when the 10 human DNA strands were deactivated, the strands were left inside the human body. These dormant DNA strands can be reactivated using the principles and methods listed in this book. When a DNA strand is active, universal light flows through it, and this light information is made available to the consciousness that inhabits the body. Read more about DNA in Chapter 8. Twelve primary light bands in this universe make up the EM, electromagnetic, spectrum. Each of these twelve bands corresponds vibrationally to the twelve primary states of consciousness. The twelve chakras, the twelve primary DNA strands, and the twelve dimensions. Other names for this electromagnetic light are scalar energy, tachyon energy, and cosmic radiant energy, understood and demonstrated by Nikola Tesla. All things are manifested by this light, including the human body. If a human body becomes damaged, it can be quickly rebuilt from a holographic projection of the original DNA template onto the damaged area. These 12 bands or frequencies of light are composed of intelligent packets of vibrational information that emanate from the quantum field. These data packets are very structured bits of information programmed to operate every aspect of the universe. The blueprint of life itself, all processes of physics and metaphysics, and the knowledge and history of all things are encoded within this light. The information contained in this light is decoded solely by consciousness. Remember Pleiadian tenet number one, for anything to exist, consciousness is required exclamation mark and quad. The structured energy patterns encoded within these light bands are often called light codes by Earth star seeds. When put together in a series, light codes are called light language. Conscious beings are light receptacles that can receive and interpret this language of light, store it in the body cells and anchor it into the crystal grid of planet Earth for others to access. Reiki is the Earth's primary spiritual energy modality, and it is based on the transmission of light codes. When activated into one's awareness by meditation, light codes bring one into a deeper embodied, resonant understanding of how the universe works. These sacred light patterns also trigger cellular remembrance of the whole picture and about who one is at the individual soul level. The most influential band of universal light resonates in the 12th dimension. This 12th dimensional light band contains photons with an energy above 2 pev and is nothing short of a cosmic nuclear accelerator. The Pleiadians call this 12th dimensional light the great central sun or source energy. 12th dimensional source light is transduced from the primary star at the 12th dimension down through the universe until it reaches a second sun located in the core of the Milky Way galaxy, in the 5th dimensional level of the universe. This sun or star in the core of the Milky Way galaxy has been called a black hole, an exotic star, the invisible sun, the black sun, and the All right. central sun. So, fascinating.
this high vibrational length towards the Earth as solar flares and coronal mass ejections. The Pleiadeans call this fifth dimensional light gamma light. Gamma light. Gamma light has much lower power than high energy gamma rays and is the perfect energy for cultivating life on Earth. Gamma is the frequency of light that resonates in the range of 40 to 100 hertz and corresponds vibrationally to the fifth dimension. The fifth state of consciousness, gamma consciousness, the fifth chakra portal, throat chakra, and the fifth primary strand of DNA. When the fifth DNA strand is activated by gamma light, it connects energetically back into the fifth chakra portal, allowing the gamma consciousness to be attained. Mm. The gamma state of consciousness decodes and manifests itself as the outwardly perceived reality of the fifth dimension. If one notices, light seems important in ascension, awakening, and conscious evolution. After 350,000 years of darkness on Earth, the planet is moving back into an area of the cosmos where high vibrational central sun rays are reaching the Earth again. As these cosmic mm. light rays impact the surface of planet Earth, exotic particles penetrate the auric energy field of the human body vessel at speeds of nearly 2 million miles per hour. They are then transported into every cell of the body. Gamma light particles have a well-defined geometric lattice structure that imprints the body cells, transforming them into crystalline structures. This crystalline imprinting and morphing of the cells is the formation of the light body. We discuss the light body in our ascension chapter. As more and more of this high vibrational, fifth dimensional light reaches Earth, it triggers a biological evolution. These cosmic rays are entering the crystalline Earth at much higher levels now, discharging an ionizing type of radiation that neutralizes, cleans, recodes, energizes, transforms, and rebuilds DNA, allowing all living systems to expand and breathe in more light. Major cosmic cycles are beginning anew, allowing more and more cosmic light to reach Earth. The planet is also moving deeper into the photon belt, where higher levels of cosmic rays are naturally flowing into Earth. Benevolent light forces are doing their part to aid humanity's conscious evolution by deflecting the right amounts of gamma light. All right, so yeah, I think uh, summarize that with saying that we're finding that we're coming into the solar system uh, more contact with the different suns from around us. They're influencing the boat. Their rays are coming into the earth and they're actually helping to raise the consciousness of the planet. Uh, and our own sun is also acting in a way that is amplifying the energies that we experience on earth. You know, it's not, the sun doesn't just, I, I believe the sun doesn't just emanate heat. The sun actually emanates wisdom, consciousness, light, information. And so we can, what they say, like within an hour of sunrise and sunset, you have the healing properties of the sun, the light that comes from the sun. So, to me that I've been uh, try and catch every sunset, at least for half an hour, like, as the sun's setting, I used to go for my run, and to me it just totally energized me. And I guess what they're saying on the the TikTok video is that it helps to reconnect our fifth strand of DNA. It's really interesting because I I've heard this before uh, regarding like our twelve strand DNA, and that we now only have two. And it's like, yeah, that seems like a bit much. It's hard to believe this th idea. But the interesting thing is, is like, you s look at geneticists, and they have like studied the cell and the DNA in it, and they basically say like, ninety nine percent of DNA in each cell is junk DNA. So what the hell is junk DNA? And Basically, the, we've got our two-strand DNA, and then there's a whole heap of DNA that's not connected, not in its helical form. <coughs> so, what they said was that it's, you know, 300,000 years ago, there was some uprising that that caused the people in power, whoever they may be, to modify us and reduce our abilities but they didn't remove the DNA they just simply broke it apart and I feel that how did they do that how did they do that to multiple humans 
I think that maybe the that great flood, the meteor event, reduced the population down to s a, s a point where they were able to modify the DNA of like a few. So, and then it, it sort of in it aligns with that idea that Noah was selected with his wife. And how is he selected? Well, his DNA was modified and then he was released in onto the earth again before the great uh, cataclysm. We did have people with 12 strands of DNA, but they were all wiped out. Or the majority of them were, not all of them. Uh, and then you found that the Abraham or Noah and his descendants all descended based on a limited DNA structure. Just a theory, but possible. So we all evolved from this two-strand DNA genetics, but we have the ability to tap into the 12 strands. And that's our challenge. The challenge is to align ourselves, find that vibration that helps the cells to reconnect. And we, we can do that by you, like bringing in the energies from the un around us, the solar system, our sun, even a fire, like an open fire. It's all about receiving light. That light teaches and guides, even though we don't even, like it's an unconscious thing. They say we have, uh, that we emit a, we emit light. Each of our, every one of our cells emits light, like on a, like a very low level. But at least it happens, and I believe that you also get p our body receiving light in our s all parts of our body, like our skin, received light, and that can be interpreted as information. Subtle, but we slowly grow. Yeah, and that's why, like, sitting around a fire or sitting and watching the sunset, we really, uh, we really, we feel that sense of what's going on. My phone's making that. Yeah, by receiving the light, we become enlightened. So, receiving light from other sources, the sun, other suns from the solar system, their energies, we can receive if we're open to it. Alright, I'm going to put something else on. I can hear Monty singing. Let's put uh, the speaker on. See if you can hear him. Can't hear him. A bit far away. All right, I'm going to put another little video on. What time is it? One twenty. Probably got another ten minutes of podcasting. Here we go. TikTok's got so many interesting and wise. Listen to him sing. So talented. Not sure if you can hear Monty, but we'll get him to come and play tomorrow night. I hope you can hear him because he's amazing.
All right. So I'm going to give the uh, elevator pitch for the tribal reunification where we can become our true selves again in a living in a community of harmony and love. How do we do that? Why do we do that? Well, why do we do it? Because it's our natural state. I've realized that living together with other beautiful souls, all with the same intention, the same drive, where we all support each other, where we all grow together, where we all celebrate together, is the natural state of existence. That is who we are as humans, is to be living together in harmony. And our system at the moment has created the opposite effect, which is total isolation. Total isolation. If you, know, if you can't agree with me that living in a suburb, suburb of a city is not total isolation between everyone around us, it's so far away from what's normal and what is makes what it is that makes humans content joyful it's so the opposite so my mission now or my mission that i've realized is is to talk about how do we bring communities together again how do we create a community system that is that functions so efficiently that uh, it encourages humans to expand their minds, to expand their consciousness, to expand their possibilities, encourages people to harmonize with each other, with themselves, with nature. These are all the important fundamental steps that are required for humans to coexist on this planet and unfortunately for whatever reason it may be is that we've been drawn away from that maybe it's just a state of evolution that we needed to go into a system that fast-tracked technological development and that's where we've been for the last 100 years, 200 years, where the Industrial Revolution has just changed everything so quickly. Now we can fly across the world. And that's that's a beautiful thing. We need to have that technology. Now I can beam to you, to the world, because I have Starlink. Like we have this technology where we can talk and we can share our ideas this was impossible only 20 years ago. Yeah, we live in an amazing times and we can utilize all this. Night, man. Have a good one. We'll see you in the morning. Yeah, we're living in these amazing times and we can utilize technologies to help with bringing us all together again. All right. I have some ideas on how to make that happen. And I'm really keen to keep discussing, keep expanding the ideas, and keep learning as to how our past, our past family actually managed the people. Yeah, really, really important things that we need to discuss because we need to be talking about the optimum social system that allows for that expansion of consciousness and harmony, love, connection, celebration, like that's what we need to be talking about is how do we create that system and my feeling is that that system existed in the past. So I've been delving into the rabbit hole and I have 
uh, many much information that I haven't shared yet that I would that I'll be sharing soon. All right. On that note, I think it's uh, it is time time to go to sleep. Much love, sweet dreams. May you live your passions and your dreams, and may you love deeply. Nighty night. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>